Wembley Stadium, quite simply the home of football and the numbers are beginning to build on Wembley Way as thousands of Huddersfield Town and Nottingham Forest fans make their way towards this famous stadium for the Sky Bet Championship playoff final. Well, it's been 23 long years since Nottingham Forest, the two-time European champions, were last in at the Premier League and their fans are desperate to get back to the big time. We've been waiting for 23 years. Waiting, wishing, dreaming of getting back. Back to where we belong. Back to the Premier League. We're Nottingham Forest. Over the years, we've seen it all. Lewis Maguga! Ups and downs, downs and ups, promotions, relegations, even two European Cups. But since we were last in the Premier League, it's all gone wrong. Frustration, frustration, frustration. So many different managers, and we all remember League One. Nottingham Forest are relegated to League One. Good. Just got it, mate. Just got it. And don't even mention those players. Oh, it's an own goal! You will have pulled it out of the fire! Jay Campbell has a hat-trick! Swansea are going to Wembley! But now we're back. And this time it's different. From the bottom of the league to Wembley. That is a special goal! Go back! Oh! Now just one victory stands between us and the promised land. One last push for greatness! Do you think we're not ready? We've been waiting for 23 years for this. Nottingham Forest were bottom of the table when Steve Cooper took over. Now they're potentially 90 minutes away from a Premier League return. This is Forest's first game at Wembley in 30 years. And if they're going to make it a memorable one, they'll need to do something that no Forest side has ever done before, win promotion through the playoffs. Huddersfield Town narrowly avoided relegation last season, but this time around the Terriers have been totally transformed. The third place finish in the regular season for Town as they look to win promotion back to the Premier League exactly five years on from one of the most famous days in the club's history. Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. He takes that chance! The fairy tale season has the happiest ending. One of the most extraordinary stories in recent years. Little Huddersfield Town, the perennial strugglers, are back in England's elite. With an entire season's hopes and dreams resting on just one final game and with promotion to the Premier League worth over £170 million to the winners, there really is no game quite like the Sky Bet Championship playoff final. Kickoff is coming up at 4.30 and as with all of this season's playoff finals, VAR will be in use this afternoon. A very warm welcome to the biggest game in domestic football. This trophy is up for grabs as well as, more importantly, a place in the Premier League. Joining me in the studio today, Stuart Pearce is a Nottingham Forest legend. Three-time Forest Player of the Year, he made over 500 appearances for the club, winning two major trophies. Michael Heffler lived the Heffing dream as part of that Huddersfield Town side that won the playoff final here at Wembley five years ago. And Joby McEnough, captain Reading to promotion to the Premier League and recently received the EFL Sir Tom Finney Award for his outstanding contribution to football. What a team alongside us here in the studio. Gentlemen, an absolute privilege and a pleasure to spend today with you. Stuart, I'll come to you first. A Nottingham Forest legend, that gets thrown at you all the time, and quite rightly so. Can you sum up what this day could potentially mean to Nottingham Forest and their fans? I think the frightening thing is, you know, I was still playing the last time they were in the Premier League, you know. The excitement that's bubbling around the place is quite incredible and that can be a dangerous thing when you come to these big tournaments, uh, but these big games, you know, and uh, certainly Forrest will go into it as favourites, but that is quite worrying <laughs> at times, you know, so uh, as I say, the boys will 
will let you know exactly mm. this is an even game, mm -hmm. an even balanced game. But for Forest fans, to even be here, I think, with the job that Steve's done is quite incredible. Emotion is key on a day such as today. Now, Michael, you've experienced the whole gamut of emotion that comes with a playoff final, being here the last time that Huddersfield Town climbed up into the Premier League. Um, you were involved in the penalty shootout. It went from despair to joy in about five minutes. Can you dial back into that emotion and how it felt? This, obviously, we're always speaking about thinking outside of the box. Mm. I put the pressure in this scenario on Reading because uh -huh. I wanted to miss. This was the match plan. And uh, <laughs> sent my good friend Shindy to glory and Huddersfield Town. This was the thinking behind it, if you want to know it. Mm. But you see it on this, on this, on this video clips. It's just amazing. 40,000 Huddersfield Town fans. All the relief, all, all, the, all the dreams, what you ever dreamed of um, yeah, in this one game. You play at this historical mm. Wembley. As, as us, a lot of lot of Huddersfield Town players were Germans, you know, it's even more special. So this was, uh, yeah, a day I will always remember in my life. And we can vouch for it here in the studio. Michael Heffler is quite the hugger. I'll let you know that. Um, we've got third and fourth finishing the championship together in the player final, Joe. Is that pretty fitting end to a season? Yeah, I would say so. You know, I think certainly in Huddersfield's case, a team that have gone. A bit under the radar, if mm. I'm being honest with you. I don't think they've probably got the credit they deserved in terms of how well they've done over the whole season. Maybe some felt, me included at one point, that I'm sure Heffel reminds me enough, <laughs> that they might just fall away at a certain point. But they regrouped after a little run of a couple of bad games and got themselves going. And Forrest, you know, Stuart's already touched on it, for them to come from where they have bottom of the table, you know, looked in all sorts of trouble at the start of the season to then be the best team mm. in the league. The facts show that most wins, most points since Steve Cooper's come in. Um, so I think it is fitting and such a hard one to call today. Big personalities needed today, none bigger for these respective sides. Jonathan Hogg and Joe Worrell now ahead of kickoff. Well, it's the biggest Forest game in a generation, Joe, and you're captain. And as a Forest fan as well, what's this day about for you? Yeah, it's massive. Um... There's been a lot of work that's gone in behind the scenes for many years now. It's not just a coincidence we're here. Um, bottom of the league at the start of the season. Um, so, yeah, we're, we've got a massive opportunity today. I just hope uh, all our players and fans enjoy it and um, we really take the opportunity. Well, Jonathan, it's 296 days since the season kicked off. If we'd given you this option today for a one-game shootout, is it fair to say you'd have grabbed it with both hands? 100% I'd have bitten your hand off. Um, from where we were at the start of the season to where we are now is credit to the club, the players and everyone involved to, to put us in this situation where we can play one game for the Premier League. So Jonathan Hogg there, the only man surviving from the 2017 playoff final. Two changes for them, Income Nabisar and the assist king Sorba Thomas. 15 so far this season, of course, set up the winning goal for Jonathan Rhodes in that semi-final second leg. Now, Michael Heffel is our man on the inside here. So this is how we believe that they're going to be set up. But it must be a bit of a nightmare because it's no stranger, is he, Carlos, to flipping <laughs> formations and the way that the team lines up during the course of a game? Well, obviously, we saw it in the previous uh, last, uh, last couple of games. He's mm. changing a lot around. He's thinking and thinking, how, he, how can he influence the game? How can he win the game? Mm. And what is the best, best option and best solution on players-wise? And this is what you see there. It was a surprise as well for me, maybe. <laughs> but um, I can tell you, it was through and through thought, you know, mm. and they are ready for this game today. There is a match plan out there, mm. I can't tell you this, but this is <laughs> definitely, uh, yeah. will be a very interesting game. Let's take a look at the Forest team that Steve Cooper has picked for today. Just the one change for them. Big debate leading up to this game and who would start up top. Keenan Davis has got the nudge over Sam Surrey. Steve Cook, it's his 400th career appearance. Philip Zinkenegel is 50th appearance for Forest. And look at Brennan Johnson, 19 goals there on the right-hand side of that attack. Um, I suppose that key debate, Stuart, was really whether it was going to be Keenan Davis or Sam Surridge at the top. They've gone for Davis. Can you see why? Well, looking at the game, certainly against Sheffield, I, I thought he had a bit of an impact when he came off the bench in the game. He, he is a handful to play against. Uh, uh, you're not sure what you're going to get. Not always as clean mm. as you would like. But I think this... Quite often when you pick a, an 11 for this game, it's not about the 11, it's about the ones that are going to come off the bench and have an impact. Mm -hmm. And I think that will be key today. You're of the impression this might go longer than 90 minutes, I think, Joby. So if that is the case, the boys on the bench are going to have to come and have impact. And uh, maybe the starters, 
I don't think it's such a big call. I think mm. it's who finishes the game is more important. Well, the numbers, of course, beginning to swell on Wembley Way. There's thousands of nervous and expectant fans are making their way towards this famous stadium. Plenty more on the way as we build up to kick off right here at Wembley. We'll hear from England cricket star and famous Forest fan Stuart Broad on a remarkable season for the Tricky Trees. Celebrating as going to the Premier League at Wembley would be, um, you know, they're the sort of days you'll never forget. We sent Joby to meet Huddersfield set piece wizard Sorba Thomas. I know all I need is one set piece, and I know I can put it in an area where, like the other night, Jordan Rose would be. So it's up to me just to put it in that area. Really. And we'll hear from both managers as they prepare their sides for the biggest game in their recent history. Forty-five minutes until the big kickoff here at Wembley Stadium in the Skybet Championship playoff final. For the Forest fans, this is a special day. Their first appearance at the new Wembley as they look to reach the Premier League for the first time since 1999. Well, the manager Steve Cooper knows all about this fixture. He tested defeat here with Swansea last season, but this time around he's played an absolutely pivotal part in leading Forest to within touching distance of promotion. This is what the Skybet Championship table looked like when Steve Cooper, uh, Cooper took over on September the 21st. Forest were bottom, just one win from their first eight games. Since then, no side has taken more points, won more games, or conceded fewer goals than Nottingham. Forest. Quite a remarkable turnaround, you'd have to say. They finished the regular season in fourth place and are here at Wembley after beating Sheffield United on penalties. So come on then, Joey, how do you sum up the impact of Steve Cooper at Nottingham Forest? <laughs> Actually unbelievable. I think if he'd have told anybody at that stage of the season when he walked in the door, and probably him himself, if he's being honest, that mm. you'd be sat here today in the playoff final. I don't think he probably would have believed it. I'm certain that Nottingham Forest fans probably wouldn't have believed it either. So it's been a, an incredible turnaround with a very similar group of players. Mm. Yes, they've added a little bit along the way. Obviously, Keenan Davis coming in in the window. But there seems to be a, a dynamism about the team. You know, they sit in at times. They're really, really good on the counter. Good pace in the team. You know, they've got some real top young players. Again, he's got a real good record of getting real quality out mm. of young players. And I think that's been a big key mixed with some of those senior boys like Worrell getting Steve Cook in as well. 23 years then since Forest were last in the Premier League. Nearly as many managers permanently in that time as well. 20 over the course of that period. And in Dane Murphy, they've got a CEO who seems to have brought stability along with Steve Cooper as head of this Forest setup. That must be important, Stuart, as a manager. A, a bit of balance, uh, kind of calm water to be able to operate in. It certainly does. The pressures that are heaped on these teams in the Championship, especially with a rich history like Forrest have mm. got, it is quite intense. I, I can tell you that from first-hand <laughs> experience, you know, and everyone's desperate for the promised land mm. of the Premier League. But unless you've got a solid structure behind, and all the clubs that get promoted out of this division have got a solid structure behind them before they actually step up. Mm. You just can't arrive with good performances and, and good results without putting the structure in beneath that off the pitch, you know? And I think Forrest are hopefully getting that right now and they're in a really good position, no matter what the result is today, mm. to go onwards and forwards. From Steve Cooper's point of view, Michael, he's obviously tasted the player final last season with Swansea, ended a defeat against uh, Brentford. How much do you think that'll help him individually in the way that he permeates that throughout the team? Massively, because he got, first of all, the experience, so he's a little bit more calm. He mm. knows what is waiting here at the Wembley Stadium for, for the lads. And I spoke as well to a couple of the players, um, and I wanted to get the thoughts of, of them. Why are you now so successful? Because I wanted to be part as well of, of this success when I arrived back in the day to Nottingham. And the lads say it's, it's purely down to him. He got all the boys, the buy-in. Mm -hmm. He shows like the strategy, strategy, the philosophy, how you can arrive to the next level mm -hmm. and um, a lot is down to Stevie Cooper. Forrest of course here after a dramatic penalty shootout against Sheffield United in the playoff semi-finals. England cricket star Stuart Broad was in the ground that day and earlier this week he spoke to David Craig about his love of Forrest and his admiration for Steve Cooper and the current crop. Oh, 
all gone. Brilliant from Broad. Eight for 15. Best bowling figures on this ground. I actually remember clear as day my first trip to the city ground. Uh, Dad took me and my sister Gemma to watch Man United Forest and we lost. 8-1, I think Solskjaer scored four. So it wasn't a great start, I must admit, but there's no doubt that this season's been the most exciting I've seen as a fan. You feel like this group of players under Steve Cooper are, are not weighed down by the past. They're, very, they're proud of what the club's achieved and they're aware they're playing for a really big club, but they're able to express themselves. And I think that's the philosophy that Steve Cooper's brought in. I mean, you, you talk to fans who experience those amazing years of the late 70s and early 80s, and what do they mention? They mention John Robertson, who, how he could run with the ball and how he, you know, give him the ball and let him go. And we've got those style of players again. Uh, Brennan Johnson's been awesome. Every time he gets the ball, you as a fan, you're, you get really excited. Sorich in behind Basham. Johnson's up there with it. It's Brennan Johnson! go from virtually bottom of the league into to finishing fourth and could have finished third if it wasn't for the last minute of the season, Content, contending for, for automatic was, was stunning. The playoffs are the most exciting way to go up, aren't they? I think selfishly now as a fan to think that I'm going to Wembley on Sunday, get to experience 90,000 people with these players playing in front of it and with a 50-50 chance as it stands of, of celebrating as going to the Premier League at Wembley would be... Um, you know, they're the sort of days you'll never forget. And, you know, I had a day out last Tuesday with with my mate Sean and Ruti at the city ground. And, you know, certainly Sean and I remember that night for, for the rest of our lives. It was just it was just awesome. I want to take you to that because that was as dramatic as it gets. At one point you were home and hosed. What went wrong? Oh, I don't know. It was that sort of just after half time, 46th minute conceding, and uh, you know, Rooty punched me in the leg because I told him, You're not celebrating, sat next to me. And he punched me in the leg with celebration when it went in. And um, you know, it was it created for amazing drama. But Bree Samba, arguably, certainly his best performance I've seen in having a Forest shirt. And I think the Forest fans will love him forever for giving us that experience of going to Wembley. Maybe this season something's written in the stars for us. You know, it just feels like feels like it's our year. A big thank you to Stuart Broad there, rocking his retro Stuart Pierce Forest top, an iconic one from the mid to late 90s. Wish him all the best with the Test Series this summer. That starts next Thursday at Lords. You can watch it live and exclusive, of course, on Sky Sports Cricket. Now, as we're edging closer to kick-off, Michelle Owen is down on the pitch with today's co-commentator, Don Goodman. Yeah, hiya, David. Let's see if you can find us, because Don has one of the best jackets on in Wembley <laughs> today. You'll be able to find us, because he looks fantastic. A jacket for the occasion, Don. Thank you. Let's come onto the pitch. Both sides warming up in front of us. You can feel the atmosphere building here pitch side. We've just been talking off the pitch about tactically how you see it playing out. And you said to me, these are two of the most tactically clever managers there are in this division. So how are you seeing this one? Yeah, uh... It's a difficult one to call, really. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that think Nottingham Forest are, are streets ahead of Huddersfield Town. I can categorically say that is not the case. And, um, you know, as I say, going back to the tactics, Carlos Corbran tweaks and changes from match to match and during games. Steve Cooper, very similar, really. Um, but there's some fascinating tactical contests out there. I think that Carlos Corbran would have learned an awful lot from the way Sheffield United went about playing Forest at the city ground. They denied them space in behind because we know how quick Brennan Johnson is, for instance. And they blocked up that right-hand channel for Forrest, which has been so fruitful for them throughout the season by the wing-back, Reese Norrington Davis. He really pressed high onto Jed Spence, who invariably was receiving the ball with his back uh, to the, uh, the opposition goal. And, and, and I think that will be a fascinating battle on that side of the pitch. We got the team sheets, and one thing that surprised us, with respect, was Naby Sarr coming in for Huddersfield. What did you make of that, and why do you think that Carlos Corbran has made that change? Well, again, they would have spent hours and hours thinking this through. They would have been looking at Keenan Davis and will he, won't he star? I think they've preempted that Keenan Davis would start. Of course, they're right. We know that now. 
and hence Naby Sarr's introduction. Look, he's a big, strong, physical, powerful central defender. Jonathan Hogg is the one who's stepping out of that back line and into midfield. I mean, Jonathan Hogg against Keenan Davis would have been a complete mismatch, so it makes perfect logical sense to me. What is Keenan Davis going to offer that Sam Surridge might not have then in this game? Because he's got the nod ahead of him. Yeah, I think particularly with his back to goal, uh, particularly the way that he occupies defenders, you know, he, he seems to, the ball seems to stick to his feet like glue. He's got brilliant feet for a big man and he brings other people into play. Add to that the pace and power that he's got going the other direction. Add to that the aerial threat. He will win lots of aerial duels. And I think it was, um, I think it was a sensible call, although that won't have been a, a pleasant conversation that Steve Cooper had with Sam Surridge. Yeah, big decisions in these huge games. So where do you see, see Huddersfield's threat coming from today? What's their biggest threat going to be? Well, I looked again closely at the uh, at the lineups there, and one glaring thing stood out to me, and it was Sorba Thomas occupying that right forward area of the pitch for Huddersfield. Invariably, they will want to isolate him against Jack Colback. I think he's quicker. I think he's got the tricks to maybe cause Nottingham Forest one or two problems down that side. So we'll all have to keep an eye out for that. Absolutely, and we'll keep an eye out for you in that jacket <laughs> as well. I'm not sure where we've got. There we are, right. There we are, David. Looking forward to this one. The atmosphere is fantastic here, pitch side, literally on the pitch. I think we'll have to get off now. But <laughs> thanks very much. And Don, enjoy your co-commentary. I will, thank you. Thank you to Michelle and Don. Uh, quite right to reference the pitch. Carl Stanley, the Wembley head groundsman. Seven games in 13 days. Of course, there was a boxing match not too long ago right here at Wembley. The pitch looks absolutely immaculate once again. And it's the type of immaculate pitch, Stuart, that suits possibly someone like Brennan Johnson down to the ground, doesn't it? Just tell, talk to me about how good he's been, how impressed you've been with him this season and what he's capable of today. I think your starting point is the stats. You know, the stats bear everything out that he's achieved for the football club mm. so far. Um, I went to the game a couple of weeks ago at Fulham where he didn't have a great deal of involvement in the game but what he did, there was quality there, mm. real quality, you know, uh, supplying crosses and, uh, and one thing and another and his movement to get on the ball and receive the ball. So you, there's a real talent there at such a young age and look, he's got the world in front of him at the moment and uh, he, he hopes to play his football in the Premier League with Forest, mm. and I'm sure if they don't get up, there'll be one or two teams potentially looking at his signature, I would suspect, you know, um, on the back of this game. Key part of how well a player can play, Joby, is how he connects with a teammate. Jed Spence down the right-hand side, those two together. The understanding that they've got has been quite remarkable, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely fantastic down that right-hand side. And I think if you're defending against it, you're thinking, right, I've got to try and deal with one, which is hard enough. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the other one. You know, in Jed Spence supporting a lot of the time, you know, on that right hand side in that wing back position, so athletic, you know, so much pace. And they are very, very difficult to stop when they get into full stride. And again, I think with Forrest, the way that they do like to hit teams on the counter with this pace, it's very, very difficult to defend against them. Mm. My big thing that I love about Brennan Johnson in particular is his directness. Mm. We don't see it a lot in the game, a winger out and out who wants to go and get after people. He's played a bit more centrally recently, but that's. Again, you can see these combinations here. This time he's driving inside. Brennan Johnson then sees that. He occupies the outside position. Again, that's that directness, getting at people, 1v1, getting your shots in. And, you know, as Stuart said, his numbers this season have been absolutely phenomenal. I think Jed Spence, on the other hand, he'd probably look at his numbers yeah. and probably like to get them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in terms of playing against that, it puts you on the back foot. And I'm sure Huddersfield will be trying to deny that space today. Bruce, can I just make a quick point here? I think where Forrest have got it right as well, they've got those two players on that right-hand side that look to get forward, but sliding across is Worrell that comes in and just backs it up from that central area, and he gives them that little bit of security down that flank as well. Well, kick-off at the National Stadium is creeping ever closer, isn't it? And Huddersfield Town fans are gathering in their numbers on Wembley Way. When we come back, we'll hear from one of their star men, Sober Thomas, on his journey from the National League to a Wembley final. After I got released from West Ham, literally all interest in football for me went away. Found myself at Brown Wood, and to me, going to non-league, probably the best thing any youngster could ever do. You don't just improve as a player, but you improve as a human being.
Well, it's exactly five years to the day since one of the most famous moments in Huddersfield Town's history. The penalty shootout win over Reading here at Wembley to win promotion to the Premier League. Well, on the pitch, it's only Jonathan Hogg who was part of that 2017 winning squad that is still involved at the club. But this Terrier side have made giant strides under manager Carlos Corberan. Huddersfield finished 20th last season, just six points above the relegation zone. This time around, they finished third, and that dramatic improvement is largely down to the defence in 2020-21. They had the worst defence in the championship. This season, they conceded 24 fewer goals and kept seven more clean sheets. Which is probably the reason why he's got a big beaming smile on that particular graphic, Michael Heffler. Can you put your finger on what he's done, Carlos, to turn this defence around? I think a lot. When we look at Carlos Cobran, he deserves, first of all, more praise because he's like at the same level, like Stevie Cooper, they did a similar job. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of positional, specific work. And, and like I said, the tactical, technical side, mm. This working hours, what he what he's putting in is just incredible. And with a with a squad Huddersfield Town, they're not the most quality players like Nottingham Forest. You have like more or less normal players, let's say. But to bring them, to lift them to Wembley, phew, this is a big achievement. And this is down to the gaffer, to the boss, to mm. Carlos. And he comes a, a little bit too short in my mind here. So um, he did an amazing, incredible job, regardless if they win or lose today. Nice low-key mind games there as well from Michael Heffler, talking about the relative quality of both squads, Joby. But this undoubtedly is a very well-coached team, isn't it? Yeah, and you can see it if you've watched Huddersfield this season. I think the tactical element has been a big, big part of their success, not just leading into games. We've seen it today, mm. and again, we've covered them a lot this year, and you never quite know what is coming, and leaving John Russell out today mm. is a big, big shout. How that will play out for the game will be really, really interesting. But they also have the ability to adapt in games as well. And that's something that all the players seem to know their jobs. So you talk about the detail that it goes into, the preparation. You know, I've been in teams where the manager might say, right, we're going to flip to a 3 5 2 from it. And you don't actually know what you're doing. Well, he'll do it in a game. All the players are on board, everyone knows their jobs, and that comes from hard work on the training ground. Must be a fine line, though, Stuart, of giving the players too much to think about. You need different ways of answering the same question, don't you? But you don't want to overload mm. them. I think you try to give them the relevant amount of information, definitely without overload, but I think the modern-day player now, and certainly I'm um, anything but a modern-day player, but working with them, they seem to want the knowledge and they want information, yeah. that's what I find. Certainly the working environment we've come from, the players want information, they want to see them clips, they want to be guided, they want to be shown. And I, I'm not sure there's too many players in the game now at any level of football that don't want that level of information to, to go into any game being prepared. Talking to key men, Huddersfield Sober Thomas has been one of the success stories of the season. In just 16 months, he's gone from playing in the National League to becoming a full international with Wales and starring for the Terriers in their push for promotion. Earlier this week, Joby went to go and meet him. Let me take you back to your time at Boreham Wood a very important stage of your career. You found yourself there after leaving West Ham. So just how did you deal with that and how important of a development stage was that for you in your career? Yeah, of course, obviously everyone knows the story that happened after I got released from West Ham. Literally all interest in football for me went away. Found myself at Boreham Woods and to me, going to non-league is probably the best thing any youngster could ever do. You don't just improve as a player, but you improve as a human being. You're not getting paid ridiculous amount of money that you would in academies. So you have to go into work and I did that. I've done a bit of coaching towards the end of my year at Brown Woods. But at the start I was in JD and then obviously doing a bit of scaffolding. So I had to grow early really. I used to sit there early hours in the morning. Before my lessons I used to stay on the gate, watch the first team. Luke Garrow just always come through and I said, Tell you, I'm gonna be there soon. I'm gonna be there soon. Every morning I just go, I'm gonna be there. And then when I finally did get there, it was about me staying there. For me, it's about proving the doubters wrong, really. Making the turning the doubters into believers. So you do really well at Boreham Wood. You get yourself a move to Huddersfield. Huge step up. Give me some examples of the challenges that you face stepping up from the National League to the Championship. Listen, people will probably lie to you, but it was scary. In a way of, I remember signing and then the next day I see snow. And this is something I ain't seen in a very, very long time. And that's when I realised, yeah, I'm not at home no more. And 
I just remember little things. So like, I was in the hotel for like the first two, three weeks and I had the nutritionist at the club monitoring what I'm eating. Like I couldn't sneak a, even though I tried so many times <laughs> to try to sneak a pizza in or try to sneak a little Uber Eats, but there was eyes everywhere. And you could see that's the difference between non-league and the champ. At times there was times I thought, maybe I'm, I don't think I'm ready yet. Maybe alone, maybe alone, but the club stuck with me. I come back stronger, fitter. Everything about me was, was better than what I came up with and proved everyone wrong, really. Is there anyone in particular that you've modelled your game in terms of the set pieces? If you look at like, my set pieces, I literally put them in with power and with pace, and literally all you've got to do is touch it. I look at Will Prowse and I look at his set piece and the way he does it, he, he will literally do the same everywhere he is on the pitch. And I admire that because you don't, you don't have someone that's going to change. I know all I need is one set piece and I know I can put it in an area where, like the other night, Jordan Rhodes would be. So it's up to me just to put it in that area, really. So moving on to Sunday, obviously, huge occasion, playing at Wembley. Is that something, the fact you've been there before, that you feel personally will stand you in good stead? For me, it's about going there and getting the job done, really. And listen, Forest are a very, very good team. They wouldn't be in the final if they weren't. Um, but for us, we know what we've got to do to get there. Um, we focus on us and we go there and do the business, really. Joby McEnough there, nodding along to Sober's summation that it snows up north. <laughs> Come on, Joby, it's not the Arctic Circle, it's just a couple of hundred miles away from London. It's cold enough down here at times. Seems a very genial chap, though, and the way that he's approached this season is something that he's really celebrating. Yeah, absolutely. It's really open, honest chat. I think, obviously, an unconventional journey to where he is today playing in the lower or the non-league and actually having to go and work and mm -hmm. big things that stand out to me is the belief that he has in his own ability which you do have to have you know we've all been there there are going to be people that tell you not good enough you are going to get setbacks it's how you respond to that and a desire to want to prove those people wrong mm -hmm. still um, but then there's also a real appreciation of where he is today perhaps because of that journey mm -hmm. and he's willing and, and really trying to make the most of it he went back into pre-season you know a good couple of weeks early to make sure he's ready for the start of the season you know, he's been absolutely brilliant, and those set pieces could be absolutely huge today. How impressed, Michael, have you been with the way he's adapted to this level of football? A lot, because, like, he's a big, big gap from non-league to championship mm. football, and he had this time, he, he worked so, so hard, and he got the support from the football club as well. And then you can see what he can do on the football pitch. He's, like, bringing the crosses in, he got the speed in the dribbling, 1v1, and he's just like always a threat, especially on set pieces. He said he just need one set piece, he yeah. can deliver it in a dangerous area and somebody will there. You saw this from the corner, you saw this from the set piece. When you have like a, a set piece taker, like mm. Thomas, oof, you happy days as a striker. You want to arrive in this red zone and then just get on the ball and score. Mm. And um, yeah, this is a big threat today, especially for this game. It certainly has been a long journey into getting into the professional game. Shades, perhaps, of Stuart Pearce from yesterday, doing a proper job as well mm. alongside football. Stuart, I'm sure something you can relate to. But this man as well, Harry Toffolo, five goals in his last nine games, all from left back. That's some return, isn't it? It certainly is. I think when I look at modern day fullbacks, they know how to underlap and get in the box. You know, if you're going to be a goal scoring fullback, you've got to be able to sort of go on the outside to deliver crosses. But on top of that, you've got to be, you've got to understand when to arrive in the box at the correct time. And obviously, he's got that trait about him in, in the game. Not long now, of course, the kickoff gets underway right here at Wembley Stadium. The atmosphere really is building. This place is going to be absolutely packed. When we come back, we'll hear from both managers as the whistle in this game begins very shortly. Huddersfield Town will play for a place in the Premier League at Wembley. It was clear that our target was to, to play the final of the playoff. It's going to be a really, really, really tough. But of course, now we are excited and motivated to, to play that game. It's a special club, this, you know, and we've just got to keep keep going, keep believing, we'll work even harder now, uh, and we will be in the best place possible to go and, go and play well at Wembley and, and win, hopefully.
We're at Wembley Stadium, just moments away from kickoff in the Championship playoff final. For the players, it's a chance to join the elite of world football. For the clubs, it's a place in the Premier League worth over £170 million. Let's get the thoughts now of both managers. Well, this is it, Steve. How do you want your players to approach this match that means so much? Like us, like us, we're here for a reason. Uh, we're here because of how we've played throughout the season, not just the semi-finals, but the, you know, the 46 games before that, the attitude, um, the identity that we've tried to create, you know, an, an identity is something that you want to show in any occasion. It gets no bigger than today, of course, in the league we play in, but um, that's the aim. Of course, as you say, it's a very special game today, and we know the big opportunity that we have in front of us, and the character of the place is going to be to give the best, to try to use this opportunity to give another step. Is it possible to treat this as just a normal game? Have you got to embrace the fact that it's not? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, of course, you have to look at the context, you have to look at the magnitude, the stadium, the amount of people that are watching, what's at stake. You know, it'd be wrong to, to, to blank that out because it's there. But at the same time, we've got to approach the game like we approach every other game in the way that we play, the game plan, the attitude. and. Um, like I said, that's what's got us here, so it'll, it'll help us be successful today. And just finally, obviously, you know a lot about your opponents, Nottingham Forest. It's been on as equal so far in the league this season. What are you expecting, though, today from them? I expect one team with a lot of potential showing their strengths because they are one team who they have very clear how to play, very fast and aggressive in the transition, and I only can expect one very, very, very competitive game. Two very calm managers ahead of kickoff. Not so much calm in the forest end, especially the fans. Almost 80,000 of them have turned up here today at Wembley. Not long until kickoff, Stuart. What would you be saying if you were the manager in the forest dressing room ahead of this? I, th I think what you try to do as a manager or a coach is judge the atmosphere within the dressing room. If you think that one or two of them need a little pick up, then the right words at the right time. That, that's the beauty of these managers, they've got enough experience to do that. Or, more importantly, I think on occasions like this, it's keeping it more level and, and calming the situation down a little mm. bit and making sure that the occasion doesn't you know, run away with the players. You know, There's a lot of players not used to playing at Wembley. Mm. It's, it's a tough place to come and play. And the occasion's a tough occasion. I've not played, you know, the Hefts played in, in this type of game. I've played in games, but certainly there's so much on this game and the build-up mm. and the promised land and the implications of not winning the game and staying in the championship and slogging away again for Forest or Huddersfield is so difficult. Well, let's ask the Hef then. What does it feel like just before you're about to walk out here in a playoff final? Huh? Just incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you you work your, your way up to this level and then you want to win this game. And, and what I would say to the lads, you know, you come to this stage, you've got to believe in yourself, you've got to believe in each other because you can do it. It's just a match of football, 90 minutes. Enjoy it, soak in the atmosphere and believe it, you can do it. And then go out there and do it. This will be like... It's huge, match. isn't it? But, but as, as Stuart was saying there, Joe, I mean, it's a football match at the end of the day in its essence, but it's everything that's hung on the top of it. How on earth do you go out and just think, I want to be the best I can be today? I was just about to say, it's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> I've been on the reverse. Easier fear. Yeah. I came here, we played against Swansea in, in the final, and we were 3-0 down at half-time. I don't think I touched the ball for 45 minutes, and that's what it's about today. You need to get out and get a good start. You need a touch on the ball if you're an attacking player. If you're a centre forward, get hold of the ball, get yourself into it. If you're a defender, make that first tackle and work your way into the game. Because we have seen, I've certainly been here, where people do do things a little bit out of character because of the atmosphere. It's not just a season's work, it might be a life's work, somebody who's never played here before. And, you know, it is a very difficult place to come and keep that composure. Whoever does that the best today, will be on the winning side. And when you see the crossroads of, of this game as mm. well, there'll be players playing in this game that may never get the opportunity to play in the Premier League, yeah. depending on whether they win or lose today. You know, that's the magnitude of it. That's really the size of the job at hand, isn't it? 2017, the Terriers know all about climbing up through the playoffs into the Premier League. As for Nottingham Forest, it's 23 years away from the top division of English football. You can feel the fear, you can feel the excitement, everything to do with what it is to be involved in a Skybet Championship playoff final. Kickoff in this one at Wembley.
comes next. It's a jewel in the EFL crown, isn't it? The Sky Bet Championship playoff final. A place in the Premier League awaits the winner. Huddersfield Town taking on Nottingham Forest kickoff just a few moments away. Three guests here in the studio. We've got Michael Heffler of a Huddersfield Persuasion, Stu Pearce from a Forest Persuasion. Joby's found a position in the middle. Joby's going to win. Oh, <laughs> a horrible question, that. Um, I've gone with Forest all the way through, really, I think, in terms of if they turn up, execute their game plan. I certainly feel they've got the better players, but we've seen Huddersfield defy the odds all season, and I think the tactical battle is going to be absolutely huge, so I'll go for it. Okie dokie. So what's going before today really doesn't matter as it all comes down to this. These players are about to take part in the biggest game of their professional lives. Nothing but their all will do as Wembley awaits a hero. Taking you through the action for the final time this season, the ever incisive Don Goodman and the always superb Daniel Mann. Oh, no pressure then. Thank you, David. Well, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be with you, as always, on this grand occasion. And whether it is the game of their lives or a prelude to greater glory, it's a landmark day for every player and member of staff involved who will handle the sheer enormity of this stage and this contest. The uh, guest of honour today is uh, Steve Birch, the CEO of Sky Betting and Gaming, who will be uh, Introduced to the two teams, Jonathan Hogg leading Huddersfield Town out. Carlos Corbran, does the professor have a plan to upset Nottingham Forest today? The better side over 46 games, although nobody was better than Forest over the last 38 of the season. Huddersfield, despite their higher finish in most eyes, the underdogs today. They may well revel in that. A different end for the Huddersfield faithful to their previous two triumphs at this renovated stage. Their supporters gathered today at the east end of Wembley Stadium. It's a wall of red to the west. Forest at Wembley, a distant memory for most of their supporters. 30 years have passed since the last visit. I hope they like what they've done with the place since then. Well, we will pause now for the national anthem performed by Jan Janelle Martin and Ben Bridger, the British Sign Language interpreter.
generally keep us guessing after a, even after a team sheet arrives, but they appear at least to have made it easy for us by naming three orthodox centre-backs. Nabi Saar has saved his last dance for Wembley, out of contract this summer, but he'll have considerable presence to the defence. Jonathan Hock, the general as he's known, appropriately enough, steps forward into midfield. The only man standing from their 2017 success against Reading. Danny Ward, a Wembley playoff winner with Huddersfield ten years ago, has shaken off a hip injury from the semi-final. A day when the super subs made the difference against Luton. Jordan Rhodes, the goal scorer, is on the bench. But Sorba Thomas, the set-piece sorcerer, is fit enough to start. It's all about the comeback kid for Forrest, Keenan Davis, whose season was declared over on Easter Monday because of a hamstring injury, but returned to the bench in the semi-final. He starts ahead of Sam Surridge, who has done absolutely nothing wrong. That's the only change to the lineup that began the second leg against Sheffield United. Brennan Johnson was on the wrong side of a playoff final defeat with Lincoln last season. Jack Colback has lost the League Cup final with Sunderland. They do trail Huddersfield on Wembley experience. How vital that will prove to be remains to be seen. The target is Premier League for both these sides. And there's a player who's already ready for it, Don. Yeah, 100%. I think he's up there in my top three favourite players in the Championship this season. And I include every single player in that. Because he's a player that does everything. Ticks every box, he's a ball carrier, he's a tackler, he's a passer. Solidarity to those suffering in Ukraine. Talking of last dances, a last dance for referee John Moss today before his retirement. The Forest also have lucky to have a man who was cast out, cast out by a championship rival in Middlesbrough this season, Jed Spence. Yeah, he didn't let it disappoint him, did he? He's been given a wonderful platform, and my word, he's grabbed it with both hands. We spoke about Lewis O'Brien being ready for the Premier League. I think most qualified people in football would believe that Jed Spence is now also ready for the Premier League. Forrest will pray that it could be with them. Well, yes, there are certainly plenty of clubs keen to test the theory elsewhere and prepare to offer Middlesbrough a good amount of money on loan from Teesside. A huge success on Trent's side. It's a wonderful, glorious scene as ever. The sun is out, I have to tell you, it's not as warm as it may look. But what does this evening have in store? Both very together groups, solidarity. Great family feel within the ranks as well, Huddersfield, as they did as a prelude to the final five years ago, went off to Portugal for a sunshine break, close family members along with the squad and the staff. Nottingham Forest enjoying the convivial barbecues amongst the training refreshers. All part of the preparation. Both clubs very much committed to the fight against racism. The Forest players will demonstrate that by taking the knee, while the Huddersfield players will applaud them in doing so. Well, it is an occasion prefaced by almost incessant chatter about money, eye-watering sums and untold riches, but there are bigger prizes on offer here today. The fulfilment of potential the achievement of ambition, the living of dreams. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a long wait since their second leg. And that is not easy, having experienced it, I can tell you. So it's been about both coaches trying to find the balance in keeping the players relaxed, but keeping them sharp and on point, working on the game plan. So the Thomas first involvement. Wanted a free kick, and the free kick eventually awarded. John Moss, as an experienced official will do, biding his time to see if an advantage is accrued. Yeah, I love it when referees do this because it's the right thing and it's taken a while for them to...
to do it on a consistent basis, but he is palmed off, it is a foul. John Moss tried to allow something to develop, it didn't, so he pulled it back, brilliant. And we should note, assisted by VAR today. Which is an experience not too many of these players have had on a regular basis. The first Huddersfield set-piece, and Thomas inevitably to deliver. Sets very high standards for himself in that regard. Well, I, I always say that is a horrible angle and an almost impossible angle, but I have seen him put it on the money from that position. To be fair to Nottingham Forest, they did defend it extremely well, and they are going to have to because Huddersfield are the kings, aren't they, of the set piece. And Sheffield United made Forest look a little bit vulnerable on occasion to a corner or a free kick. Have done some extra work in that regard, mindful of Huddersfield's strengths. Just uh, making sure that they do the fundamentals right because they have a very good record at defending them, actually. You can see very few goals from the dead ball. It's the same at Swansea under Steve Cooper, wasn't it? Got his players organised and hardly conceded set pieces. O'Brien, challenged by Warren, is deemed to be a foul. It's interesting, isn't it? Because they have got ball carriers, Huddersfield Town. Certainly O'Brien falls into that category and already have been fouled twice. Deeper. Thomas will deliver. Saw at some presence. What a great situation for Sorper Thomas to produce anything like his best. Oh, once again, the angle is not really conducive. Lee's Davis foraging. That he is able to forage from the start here today is a, really a bonus. We had an impact in, the, in both legs when he came on the field. I think that's of Steve Cooper's thinking, really. It's really harsh on Sam Surridge. It wouldn't have been a conversation that Steve Cooper would have enjoyed. Huddersfield might not enjoy Jed Spence rampaging like this. Abby Saar standing firm. Well, the tempo is really good at the start here. It's often a game that's racked with tension and often not very open. I said about tactics, these are two of the best in the division in terms of coming up with game plans. And to exploit weaknesses in the opponent. It's Garner, Worrell so far forward. Nice idea. Joe Worrell stays forward here, look, makes a really good run in between two defenders, but then knows he's not going to get there, does put hands on Levi Corwell. Four, like the last man to captain Forrest at Wembley. It was Des Walker. Steve Cooper hoping for a more pleasurable experience this time around. Not feeling there's too much he can draw from last year, a very different group of players. And I think you could certainly argue a better group of players. I think with respect, he, he was up in his two Swansea playoff campaigns against a super good, very strong outstanding Brentford team and they were underdogs and to be honest this time last year Brentford started fast got their noses in front and made this game an awful lot easier 
than it could have been had they not done that. I expect this to be tighter, and I think we've seen from these early exchanges. Supporters on Levi Colwell today borrowed from the Stamford Bridge Cup, whose facilities Huddersfield used yesterday to train and prepare for the game. Opted to wear the number six, number 26, which uh, John Terry made his own. Well, that's just a coincidence. And Zinconaga runs it out of play. Colwell wearing 26 because it represents his birth date. February as it happens. He's had a wonderful season, hasn't he? Gained fantastic experience, and we've seen how Chelsea loanees tend to grow by their experience of being on loan, particularly in the Championship. There are numerous examples. The loose there from Naby Sarr. His last uh, playoff final got off to a terrible start, scoring an own goal. In Sunderland's favour, wearing the colours of Charlton, it all worked out all right in the end. And Sunderland have already exorcised that ghost this year in the League One final. It's O'Brien for Danny Ward. Moral to tidy up. You can see when they win the ball back, how quickly they want to spring forward through Sorba Thomas, O'Brien. Sinani, it's often given a license to roam and rove. Race on between Colwell and Johnson. A contest full of intrigue between two shining young talents. Well, I'm really pleased to see Levi Colwell do what he did there. Took no risks, no nonsense. Went very, very well. Otherwise, what that was all about is Ryan Yates. Wayward in the end, but a player who shows real dedication to his craft and has really maximised his abilities this season, had a wonderful campaign. I think he's one of many, many, many players out there who these two coaches have made better and better this season. Yeah. We'll go the way of Huddersfield. Thomas. O'Brien. Wriggle away from Zinkenaga. Top of They've settled pretty well, you know, with this field. From what I'm seeing, there's been no nonsense when it comes to defending. Haven't taken any risks, but I've tried to move the ball quickly been in the opposition half. Seventeen place rise on last season for Carlos Corbran. Lee Bromby, the sporting director, deserves a huge amount of credit too. First raid by Zinconago yields a free kick. Think about this, John Moss, before deciding to issue a yellow card. I think it's a little bit unfortunate because that's oh, it's the deliberate touch by Zinconagel. He's just too quick, gets there first. Nabisar gets that right arm out. So he is lucky to get away without seeing a yellow card for that because it was cynical. But 
John Moss knows once he produces the first one, and that's it. Well, he doesn't want to open the gates just yet. James Garner on loan from Manchester United. Cultured player with quality from these situations. Ryan Yates in the middle of your picture, the number 22, certainly a player to watch. And it does reach Yates! And it is a very close call indeed. Well, that is deja vu. He had an identical chance at Bramall Lane in the first leg of the playoffs. Times his run. He's onside because there's a Huddersfield defender deep. And once again, it's identical. It doesn't quite get enough of his forehead on this to guide it on target. It's a glancing flick. Oh, it's a big, big chance and a big moment. And one they will certainly hope not to be regretting come half past six. Nabi Sar. Not completely out of trouble. Here's Spence now for Forrest. Threatening to get a grip of the game here. Is it that Huddersfield the set piece kings were nearly undone by a set piece? Brilliant delivery from Garner. Having settled well, Huddersfield, it's now perhaps the turn of Forrest to assert themselves. He does this so well, times the run between defenders it's a free header it's going to be really disappointed can't dwell on it though sat on the bench with Scotland during the European Championship last year. Steve Cook, great experienced addition to the Forest ranks. Now it's Spence, topple over the challenge, Worrell. Toffolo defends well. Probably most noted for his attacking intent. He is a very attack minded wing back, but can defend. The right goal glut at the tail end of the season. Spence. Combining with Johnson and forcing a corner. Well, once again. Harry Toffolo doing good basic defending, stopping the cross, but it's these two again, isn't it? Spence and Johnson linking up really well. He does well in the end, Harry Toffolo, getting back and intercepting that delivery. A good five minutes for Forrest here. It's a fairly crowded six-yard box which has uh, attracted John Moss's attention. And this is where both coaches will have made the players understand that VAR is watching, and you have to be careful. Well, I think it was possibly more with concern at what might happen at the other end, but I know Forrest have had a workshop with a couple of VAR officials this week, with the staff and the analysts, the headlines, if you like, passed on to the players. Nichols went to wandering and didn't go a getting. I think he misjudges it. It's hit with a bit of pace. He was never really getting there, but fortunately for Huddersfield, no Forest player was coming in round the back. Well, he has been, I was going to say, one of possibly the outstanding figure in the Huddersfield ranks this season, the Championship Goalkeeper of the Year. Wembley experience with Northampton, not happy experience. Maybe a nervous moment there. You just don't know who it's going to strike. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't an 
overly hairy moment, was it? Because nothing resulted of it. I think Lee Nichols coming into the championship, having not featured for MK Dons the season before, is clearly a man of good mental substance. He's been brilliant this season. Oh, he's been phenomenal at the end. And goalkeeping Paul Clements had to... a few crucial pointers when he arrived, one of which was to lose a little bit of weight. But he certainly gained in terms of his reputation yeah. enormously. It's the goalkeeper at the other end that was the star of the semi-finals, wasn't it? That's the reason that Nottingham Forest are here. I wonder if he has a message on his bottle today. Oh, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Potential penalties. There was a note taped to his water bottle in the first leg with all the Sheffield second leg with all the uh, Sheffield United penalty takers that they could do homework on listed on it. And had there not been a pitch invasion, we probably would never have found out about that. Here's Yates. Garner. Cole back now for Forrest. Just sitting in now, aren't they, Huddersfield? Just sitting deep a little bit in low block. They are perfectly happy at doing that in periods of games. See there, well organised. Good leader at the back there in Tom Lees, haven't they? Jonathan Hogg will be communicating. Idea is to make it very difficult for Nottingham Forest to get between the lines. McKenna. Davis losing out. Here's Tom Lees. <laughs> Able to tidy up. Sar immediately facing pressure. I'll tell you what, he's glad he was fouled because he was in big, big trouble. I think Zinkenagel is backing up. Brennan Johnson is on the scene. If Zinkenagel doesn't foul him, he's in big trouble and he needs communication. That's what he's saying to his teammates there. But when he is in possession, they're on him in a flash, aren't they? So it seems. They just seem to have settled down now, don't they, Nottingham Forest? I'm not saying it was a nervy start, but they weren't really offering any kind of attacking threat. Here's Spence. It's McKenna. Garner. Eric Ten Hag wants to run the rule over in pre-season at Manchester United. So the door. It's certainly open to him if he can impress. A lot of lone players upon which Forrest have heavily relied on this season. Here's Spence, another of those. This is the patient side of Nottingham Forest, isn't it? Renowned as a brilliant counter-attacking team, but they can keep the ball. Davis, Garner, Yates made a little dart, he was checked the other way, Garner able to find Jed Spence, Ward, actions away from nipping in, here's Yates, shooting chance, I just wonder whether it's in his head that he's already missed the chance because he had Brennan Johnson outside him and he could have slipped Brennan Johnson in. He takes up a brilliant position. There's a lovely little layoff by Zinkenaga, but there, can he slot Brennan Johnson just to his right? 
just snatches at the strike. goal output since the turn of the year nine in all competitions this season worth mentioning that one of those was against Huddersfield in the FA Cup it's the fourth meeting between the two this season Hogg looking for Simani over hit pass good situation and that's all it takes, because it has been ten minutes of Nottingham Forest in control. With Huddersfield sitting in, but that's all it takes, that split second. And it wasn't dissimilar to the way they struck at Luton in the semi-final first leg. You can see there, talk about Nottingham Forest dominating the last ten minutes. There's your proof in terms of control. Johnson. Yates. And there's Saar. O'Brien. So at ease when he carries the ball. And he's found Thomas. He'll only find Worrell, who was alive to the situation. Yeah, very, very good cover. Joe Worrell, the skipper. Nottingham through. And through Forrest. That's what Lewis O'Brien can do. Ball carrying opens things up. And he goes for the full 90 minutes as well. I think one of the most notable moments in the second leg was an incredible 60-yard sprint he made in the 92nd minute. Retreat to his defensive position. Davis, potentially great moment there. Thomas. Huddersfield trying to re establish a, a bit of a grip on things. It's Toffolo's ball in. Johnson going down. straight offside and that's why uh, whatever happened didn't result in a forest free kick Brian. 
after he released it. Oh, I think it's an innocent coming together. But again, he gets there before Colback can't stop his momentum. It is a foul, but it doesn't have to be a yellow card. All smiles again. Well, you wouldn't want to be the next Forest player to foul Lewis O'Brien, would you? Because you may well see a yellow card. He offers more than his football skill, Lewis O'Brien. His uh, initiation song was a belting performance of Stevie Wonder's Superstition. He really does commit to it. So they say. If you're going to go there, you have no choice but to commit, trust me. Not for the faint-hearted. It's not all about technique either. Chilly at Wembley, but Keenan Davis is wearing gloves because of a superstition he has. The gloves are, are lucky. If that makes him feel good, keep them on. Not really been in this game so far. It's been a little bit on the periphery. They haven't been able to feed the ball his way, maybe as often as they would like. Spencer cut that out, Topolo's out of the game. Over Johnson said. Huddersfield not out of the woods, it's Spence with four in the area. They need a bit of help and Joe Worrell's on hand to provide it. Garner, McKenna. Have a crack. Happy Saar, the player in the way. Certainly not the most threatening, haven't they, Forrest, in terms of goal scoring, in terms of if one team at the moment looks like they could, it would be them. Possession for his team by the body of Tom Lees. He's done well to get hold of the ball or get a throw in, but it's a great ball to him. It made his life difficult. It's a little more to his liking. Zinkenagel. So Jonathan Hogg with uh, an important foot in. Spence, Worrell, Johnson. Crashed away by Topolo. intervention but an effective one yeah, he made an early decision that he was going to come out and intervene there didn't he Joe Worrell and Forrest turned this possession into something into some sort of tangible reward Spence Discipline 
shape. And they turn it over, they look to spring quickly. Spence. Now Thomas, presented it by Hogg. Thought about taking over. Thomas can't quite find Danny Ward. It's a nice idea because he pulled away Danny Ward for that reverse pass. It's one good ball away from being in a decent situation there, Danny Ward. Start that League One final ten years ago, went all the way to penalties for Huddersfield against Sheffield United. As he played on the left of midfield in that game. Huddersfield with two playoff final wins since the stadium was rebuilt here at Wembley. This is Garner. It's a pass forward, maybe born of a little bit of frustration, really, because they are finding it hard to penetrate. Getting behind, they are finding it hard to get in between the lines. You have to credit Huddersfield Town's organisation for that. They're dominating possession. It feels like Huddersfield are just holding them at arm's length a little bit. Full of respect for what Carlos Corbran has achieved at Huddersfield. I'm very wary of how difficult it will be when they sit in that 5 4 1, if you like. the option he's away from Warren Warren O'Brien wait Topolo to retrieve win the outcome well this is the most dangerous that Huddersfield have been isn't it really clever movement from Sorba Thomas and he's found Joe Warrell Dives in a little bit, skips round him easily, but unfortunately for Huddersfield, it's on that left foot. He's got to take a gamble with it. Can't really be as accurate as he would have been, maybe had it been on his right foot. Just decides to try and go hard and low, but Samba anticipates that. Boost that he's signed a new contract, Sorba Thomas. Davis. was off like a train on the left-hand side. This is Yates now to Spence. Yates. Once again, Huddersfield have nine outfield players back. Here's Warren. Garner to McKenna. Garner again. It's interesting, you've got the Huddersfield Town fans behind that goal that they're defending and really appreciating the work without the ball. Have been educated this season to appreciate that. by Yates, it's Ward now to Thomas. Thomas held up this time, and Ryan Yates to bring it away for Forrest. You see why a, a counter-punching game suits Huddersfield. Yeah, absolutely two to stop Sorba Thomas there, didn't it? But having done that, they've been a little bit slow to get forward and they now are in a situation where, once again, Huddersfield have every man behind the ball. 
think that might be the message perhaps at half time that they've got to do things a little bit quicker in terms of passing, in terms of moving. And there'll come a point where you need to take a little risk with a pass or two to try and be penetrative. Uh, Johnson into Spence here, who stayed on side. Zinkanaga. Now Ward. It's going to be lonely for him at times, but plowing that follow really effectively here. What a cracking challenge that was by Garner. It is a really good challenge. The Huddersfield have the consolation of something that we know they love, which is a corner kick, but Danny Ward does ever so well there. Garner, no nonsense. But it all stemmed from them winning the ball back, didn't it? Huddersfield Town and breaking forward quickly. anybody around in these kind of situations I'm not seeing the usual crowd scene on the far edge of the six-yard box they're a little deeper here something up their sleeve Sinani there's Ward coming in on it it hasn't quite come to fruition but some ingenuity yeah. some new tricks straight off the training ground intricate little movement Allows Danny Ward to peel round the back, and Sorba Thomas picks him out beautifully. I have to say, there's not too much of a gap for him to find the target there. It's good defending by Forrest in the end. Well, this time we've got something more familiar. There's a right ruckus on the far edge of the six-yard box. Headed down by Hogg. Toffolo battling for it. Crucial intervention by James Garner again. It's the first time they've really had a panic on, isn't it? Nottingham Forest, and it's no surprise that it's come from a set piece. It was almost as close as you'll see to a rugby scrum on that far post. Here's O'Brien. Sinani. Brian involved again. Raised up by Zinkenaga into Pipa. <laughs> barely mentioned. Not been a noted presence in opposition territory so far. He didn't get what he wanted there. Well, in the thinker's pose. I, th I think what will please him is that for all of the possession that Nottingham Forest has, they have protected Lee Nichols. He hasn't really had anything to do in terms of shot stopping. Mark Thomas. That was Warren. Here's Johnson now for Forest. This game has unfolded. Look how deep this field the town is sitting, and they're blocking in those spaces that Nottingham Forest like to get in behind. Excellent tactically from them. as ball boy, goalkeeper in his brief playing career. Jonathan Hogg able to step in. That's McKenna. Jack Cole back now for Forrest.
Spence. Sinkanaga. This parent club have been relegated. Watford. Call back now to Garner. Yates. Worrell. Zinkenaga. Yates. In now to Davis. McKenna's on hand, but so too is Garner. Garner to whip it. Yates has stopped! Effort, but Yates is coming in, he misses his kick, and unfortunately, it comes off. Levi, Levi Colwell is trying to clear it, he's in a horrible position. The defender, he has to try and intercept it because the strike is going to be on target and maybe test Lee Nichols. Look what it means. We have to reiterate at this stage, scoring the first goal in a playoff final at this level is huge and usually results in victory. Well, Levi Colwell's misfortune. Good earned Forest A fortune and a place in the Premier League. Half-time is approaching. If you're not in Forest, you just want to manage is left of this first half and going at half time a goal ahead anything more is a bonus O'Brien they took the lead in their last game didn't they so just to put a sense of perspective and a bit of a reality check in it the game is far from done this is a Huddersfield team have a decent record when they concede first. And four championship matches this season. They've got character, they've got togetherness, they've got fighting spirit. So they won't lie down, that is for sure. All that will be tested here. Yeah. Davis. Boris hoping to ride the wave going into half time.
Welcome back. Nottingham Forest strike first in this playoff a final. An own goal by Levi Colwell. But, Stuart Pearce, is the ball in that good from James Garner that the Huddersfield Town defender really has nowhere else to go? For me, Saar has come out straight up the pitch instead of getting in line with the ball. As a central defender, I always think that you've got to get your position, which is if you drew a line between the ball and the goal, you as a central defender have got to be in that line. He comes out straight up the pitch in line with the opposition's goal, opens the channel up, and you can see Saar just stood there, you know, and it's got no effect. All of a sudden, fullback. Cole Hill is just chasing back then you're in big trouble at that stage because it's a run from Yates Michael that he can't leave can he Levi he's got to go with him no he got to go like Stuart said stay in the line yes you can squeeze up but everybody has to be on the same line and then he's creating this little pocket where he's arriving and then it's just yeah, lock or unlucky mm. for Huddersfield Town own goal Levi Colville young player such a good talent uh, I'm, I'm the I'm sad for him, um, but it is what it is. Mm. You have a big second half, big 45 minutes, and you can turn it around because the match plan so far was working, mm -hmm. sitting, waiting, and Forrest didn't do anything. Key feature of Ryan Yates' game this season has been the way he's been able to arrive in at the box. He did have another good opportunity with another fabulous ball in Joby. Should he have done better? Oh, absolutely. As you say, he's done this very well. It's his timing of his run but also his leap and he makes normally really really good contacts a great delivery nice and flat just doesn't quite get enough to direct it into that back post area but you can see mm. here it's just a bit of a glance where he just needed a little bit more on it but again it's something that certainly Huddersfield would have to be very aware of another set piece as well for Huddersfield Town nearly came off Sober Thomas into Danny Ward this has been worked on the training ground hasn't it 100 percent as you can see it's working perfectly and then clean touch can he hit it a little bit better, Wadi? Yes, probably. Good block there, but this was for me like our chance, and um, it's not went in. It is what it is. Frustration then at half time. Huddersfield Town and Michael Heffler, of course. However, for Nottingham Forest, they're a goal up and they're just 45 minutes away from ending 23 years of Premier League. That's 1 0 their lead at the break. The second half comes next. on hand but so too is Garner. Garner to whip it, Yates has scored! That's an own goal that separates the sides at half-time. We've had Colwell put through his own net, leaving Forrest a one-up at half-time in the Championship playoff final. Jubilation there for the Forest fans going into the break. So you're brought here somewhere on Thursday. They'll be at Lords for the first test between England and New Zealand. Saturday, July the 2nd, it's the first of the Summer Rugby Internationals. That's Sky Sports action. Thursday, day one of the Open Sky Sports Golf. Then the 100 is back Wednesday, August the 3rd. Sky Sports cricket. Certainly has been a game of contrasting emotions so far. Very close in the only 45 minutes. Both fans in full voice. It's the Forest fans, though, singing into the half-time break as they lead Huddersfield Town 1-0 in the playoff final. Welcome back. Second half about to get underway here at Wembley between Huddersfield and Nottingham Forest. Forest 1-0 up going into the second portion of the game. Now, it's a very tenuous lead at the moment, Stuart. What's the approach from Forrest going into the second period? I think in the main, more of, more of the same mm. in many ways. Huddersfield have not really threatened the goal, uh, aside from maybe the set, pl the set play. And the set plays might... Uh, I think if, you, if you're putting a team out, you say, don't give any free kicks mm. or corners away because it might be a key card for Huddersfield. But in the main, if Huddersfield are coming out and, and coming on to Forrest, I think that will probably suit them a little mm -hmm. bit with their, their counter-attack pace. So... They'll be pleased to have their nose in front in a game that probably neither team at this moment deserve to be winning. And Huddersfield Town, Michael, under Carlos, they know exactly how to change a game. We saw Jordan Rhodes come off the bench for the second leg of the semi-finals. Do you expect a change sometime soon? Definitely. Maybe a change now or maybe in the next 10 minutes, 10, 50 minutes, how it is. There is definitely a different plan for the second half, uh, I can tell you this. And, uh, there's still opportunity and still the chance there. It's never easy to win a final, it's never easy to win a game, and you've got to grind it out now. Is that what it is? 
Joby? That experience, the know-how, the nows, game management. Is it too early to talk about game management? No, not at all, because what you don't want to do is gamble too early and be completely out of the game. But at the same time, they need to show a little bit more attacking intent. Mm. They've got some options on the bench, maybe a little tweak formation-wise, just to try and get down the sides of the forest back free and just try and create a little bit more than we saw in the first half. Look at that wonderful shot of a wonderful step in the second half of the Championship playoff final, a place in the Premier League at stake. Forest 1-0 up going into the second period. Once again, Don Goodman, Daniel Mann. No changes of personnel to report as we prepare for the second half here. They always say it's a great time to score just before half time, but when we were discussing it, may not be the worst time to concede from others with one of his chance to regroup quickly. Yeah, I think if you flip it on its head, then what it meant that was Carlos Corberan could get his boys into the changing room and pick them up again and just instructs one or two little tactical tweaks that might allow them to be a little bit more creative in that final third. There's a sense that it has been more the kind of game that they wanted, although clearly they would have liked to have muster more threat at the other end. Whether that be uh, more in terms of the effectiveness of the counter-attacks or the set-pieces, Got him in the game really at all, Daniel Sinani. No, and because they are now a goal behind, that is an area where they need him involved. And if he doesn't get involved in the opening 15 minutes or so, there are options for Carlos Corberan on the bench. A very deep one, maybe a better angle this time. And Tom Lees is there, Danny Ward. Lee's involved again, and Pippa. It's actually Sinani who'll deliver the cross. Brees Samba deals with it effectively and decisively, and safely on that occasion. It's the first real thing that he's had to do, isn't it? The punch, not the catch. The catch was easy, but the decision to come and punch clear was good. Forrest can get moving. It's Johnson. Pippa. to Yates, urge to shoot. And safe hands from Lee Nichols. I wondered whether or not Sorba Thomas would continue on the left or come over to the right and maybe have a go at Jack Colback. He's come out at the start of the second half and he has started on this right-hand side. Untested, wasn't he, Jack Colback in the whole of that first half? You've got to remind yourself, he's a midfielder playing out of position. He had it pretty easy. Well, it's probably a case in terms of Thomas's first-half position that they were pretty mindful of the threat of... Spence and Johnson down that right side, and Thomas is a player capable of operating at wing back as he has done for much of the season. It's the extra defensive capacity important, but now they've got to chase the game, or well, certainly they've got to create a good deal more threat in the final third. Levi Colwell. Possession again. Nabi Saar. Here is Sinani. Challenged by Wall. An effective one. Saar able to retrieve possession. Now Pippa for Huddersfield. Davis attempting to shackle him. Garner as well. Here's O'Brien. Sinani. Gates and Garner gang up on him. And challenged by Sinani, deemed worthy of a free kick in Forrest's favour. Lewis O'Brien in conversation. Very tough fellow on the other side because he wanted to open up and keep the ball going that way. Ultimately, ended up committing a foul.
Johnson. Really yet got into that wonderful ball carrying stride, Brennan Johnson today. Been afforded the room to do so. Well, I think in the last couple of minutes we've seen why Silver Thomas has come over here. He, they're going to look for it to hit him early. He's got the pace. Probably in a straight foot race, he will probably beat all three of those Nottingham Forest central defenders. So that's twice in the opening four minutes or so of the second half they've tried that. Oh well. A good time to prevent Spence from latching onto it. It's Ward, Hogg, Sinani, and now O'Brien. Is a little unhappy with something and making that known. Toffolo on the receiving end of a painful one a little earlier. Yeah, I think Jed Spence just catches him late, Harry Toffolo. Extraordinary story saw but Thomas I'm sure you've heard much of it but released by West Ham at the age of 15 the uh, boots and the shin pads were promptly placed in the nearest dustbin worked as a scaffolder worked in a sports shop Sunday league to non-league and now on the cusp of the Premier League having already played international football Brilliant story That's the kind of stories that warm your heart hope for all of those players that have gone through the same thing as him. Premier role here with Boreham Wood not that long ago. Was a substitute in the playoff final at National League level. see on the other side of Nottingham Forest, they're also a team that are comfortable when the opposition have the ball and keeping a good shape, keeping their discipline, making it hard. And that's why a lot of Huddersfield players have had to pass the ball backwards rather than forwards to keep it. Davis. Oh, he's on the rampage now. Johnson arriving. Dealt with by Colwell and then dispatched by Saar. But not away from danger. It's Jed Spence now for Forrest. Garner. Worrell. Spence. Driving for the line. And it will be a corner. A good couple of minutes. Nottingham Forrest. This is what he brings to the table, this is why he's been brought in. Impossible to stop that as a central defender. He's got the presence of mind, he gets his head up, he spots Brennan Johnson. Just can't quite pick him out. And talking about the scaffolder, he's uh, being marked by there. He used to sweep the floor at a barber's shop, Keenan Davis, not that long ago. The agony of being released by Stevenich. Oh, and McKenna beaten to it crucially by Saar, it's Colback. Back in, well, not really fired by Zinkanaga. Spence being tested here by O'Brien. Out of trouble. Well, that's a risk, and he's got away with it because he's good enough to get away with it. But it was a huge gamble. I spoke about Levi Colwell in the opening ten minutes, putting his foot through it. Don't take those risks. This ball met by the vastly experienced Cook. And O'Brien driving forward, and he's got the free kick for an earlier challenge, and Zinconago will be booked for it, the first card of the final. It's always coming, the way Lewis O'Brien plays when he runs with the ball and commits you 
Think Canagel already committed a foul on him. It's a little bit unfortunate. Philip Zinkenagel, he just stumbles, accidentally catches him on the back of the heel. That's enough to send him over. John Moss resisted the temptation until the 55th minute. to attack. Excellent. From Scott McKenna. Well, John Russell. A big presence, but a very calming presence in midfield. For Huddersfield Town. This is Hogg. Pippa. Thomas, Pippa certainly moving with interest for a return here. And they force a corner. Yes. They move the ball really quickly. Makes the offer, Sorba Thomas, and again, he's got time to put a teasing delivery in. It's not an awful lot Jed Spence can do, but concede a corner here. That means more defending to be done. And some excitement at the east end of Wembley Stadium. Where the Huddersfield supporters are gathered. Extra care perhaps being taken by the Forest players here with VAR in use. Hogg with that trademark run to the near post. Well, we've seen him score from that set piece routine, haven't we? Simple but effective. Aggressive run across the near post. Just doesn't get the contact. He's furious with himself. Well, Nabi Saar departs. Be interesting here whether there is a change of brief for Jonathan Hogg with Russell coming onto the field, and it looks very much as though he will take up a position he's become familiar with in recent months at the centre of the back three. Russell very at home in Huddersfield's midfield. You could say athletic in that area than Jonathan Hogg. Yates comes out the winner, but then loses the ball, and Tom Lee's now for Huddersfield. O'Brien. <laughs> games off the ball there, Colwell and Johnson. That's what you see all the time, isn't it? Ball going to goalkeeper, defender steps across, forward, collision. Pippa took his eye off it. Davis. Colbeck's a man on the mission, but the pass behind him, I don't think they expected him to be rampaging so quickly. Russell, Thomas on the move here. Four up with him. Once again, excellent positioning from Scott McKenna. He knew that that was about the only place that Sorba Thomas could hit, really, on the stretch, on the run at that pace. Good anticipation. From Mr Consistency in a Forest shirt, he doesn't perhaps get the rave notices as some of the others, but he's had a magnificent season, playing through injury at times as well. Here's O'Brien. Here's that response from Huddersfield Town. You knew at some point it was going to come. Mr Heffler informed us there was a, a plan for the first half and a plan for the second half, and we're now seeing the plan for the second. And of course, the aim for Huddersfield now has to be to test the nerves of Nottingham Forest. We've seen them tested in recent weeks. Sometimes Forest have come through it, and other times you've looked and you've a little worried. They certainly took a lot of encouragement in that regard from the way they dug in, if you like, and showed the character in the penalty competition at the end of the semi-final, having been second best for much of the match. It's a 
as well in saying that to remember how brilliantly they played at Bramall Lane. Incredible, one of the performances of the season. And it needed to be on reflection. I think they've really learnt from that and probably knew anyway with Steve Cooper's experiences. You rarely play well throughout a playoff campaign. It's Garner who will unleash. more urgency though and that's the quick release from Lee Nichols you can see that the urgency with which Huddersfield are playing now the tempo been an injection of tempo into their play Hulk. Russell. It's brought into play for the B team, like Thomas, a similar scenario. B team, like uh, Brentford. They uh, did a lot of work in strengthening his leg power. Individual programmers, players tend to have these days. Tied up by Colback. The urgency epitomised there by Danny Wards. Uh, attempts to close down Brees Samba. It's Sinani who's getting a good deal more of the ball in this second half than he did in the first. Forest really need Keenan Davis to hold that ball up there. Just give them a little bit of relief. The ball is on from Pippa. Away by Steve Cook. Zinkenagel and McKenna. it moving as does Yates. Garner's suffering a little. Looked like a brief suspicion of cramp from for the boy from Birkenhead. Different feel. There's no massive forest possession in that middle third of the pitch which there was in the first half. Team are a great counter attacking force themselves. Hog to O'Brien. Toffolo. Chelsea yesterday, we had a great experience for Harry Toffolo, who is a Chelsea fan. Thomas. It's McKenna again. Oh, brilliant. Again, but there's your contest. Huddersfield, can they get the ball to Sorba Thomas? Because he will. A lot of the time, he's going to get past Jack Cole back. Toffolo with a chance to deliver here. Delivery does. And in the end, give Thomas another opportunity. That's Worrells. Pippa. John Russell. squeeze it through to its destination despite Johnson's best efforts this is role reversal to the first half now isn't it domination of the ball in that area but without the 
threat of a goal. Greece Samba still had a shot to save. Well, he was carrying a knock from the semi-final, Sam Surridge, but he's always available to be a, a finisher, as some call them now. And a finisher in every sense, he's produced terrific stuff in front of goal in the tail end of the season when he's got an opportunity in Davis's absence. in the uh, regular season. Jordan Rhodes had come on 17 times, so uh, it's not uh, an unexpected change. And a change that worked to good effect against Luton in the semi. Yeah, he's been really effective, hasn't he, when he's stood in for Danny Ward or replaced Danny Ward. What he needs, Jordan Rhodes, is just a half a chance. That's all he'll be praying for. Zinkenagel, Russell, O'Brien. Johnson battling. Here's O'Brien. Involvement for Holmes. Toffolo to take it on. Holmes wanted a foul, he's not going to get it. Ball stays in play. Got to get hold of it now. Otherwise, it's going to come straight back. Rhodes. Lead for Huddersfield. Ten years ago in the League One playoff final. Scored a penalty in the shootout after a season when, uh, which was kind of Mitrovic-esque over the 40 mark. He's a Huddersfield legend, whatever happens here today. A Hall of Famer. Hoping to see it through. Has a spark been lit under the club like it was briefly under Frank Clark, who led them to a brilliant promotion. Finished third in the Premier League back into Europe, where they were only vanquished by one of the blue blooded aristocrats in Bayern Munich with Jurgen Klinsmann leading their attack. The UEFA Cup quarter final. Bayern ending up winning the competition. 
beating a Bordeaux side inspired by a young fellow called Zidane, who did quite well after that. Just a little bit. Colback, a burst from Yates beyond Johnson. He might get it the second time. Holmes away. Yates ran away from Zinconago, but not from Brennan Johnson. Surridge is not far away. And that's why when you shoot from that angle, you should always go for the far post, and this is a perfect example of why. Because his teammate could easily have got on the end of that. This uh, upcoming change for Nottingham Forest is in partial response to Huddersfield placing Thomas effectively on Jack Colback and hoping he will win that battle because uh, Max Lowe is getting ready to come on. Who, uh, we uh, haven't seen in action since the uh, early weeks of March. season. This is good from Forrest, just keeping the ball for the sake of it, really, just for a spell. McKenna. Colback gets going, it's Lees though. Russell, Garner. And here is O'Brien. Oh, a slip by Worrell and Holmes has the freedom of Wembley here. Well, into an inviting area. Oh, good decision. And it goes the way of Forrest. And a yellow card for Harry Toffolo. Well, the call that John Moss must be convinced. But what we do know is that we have VAR in operation. Ooh, he just hangs a leg, Jack Colback. But then you've got to say, is there contact? Is there enough contact? Oh. Even if he doesn't make contact, is that what knocks him off balance? This is a difficult call. Very difficult call. And unless they're convinced and they see at Stockley Park that John Moss has made an obvious error, and that's key. Oh. I wouldn't like to be the VAR on that one, I tell you. Well, Paul Tierney is the VAR. And assistance from Ian Hussin. What it is, is an opportunity to regroup. The check is complete, the game will go on. And Huddersfield can feel as aggrieved as they like. But the decision is made. It's one of those, isn't it? If John Moss had have given a penalty, I do not think VAR would have overturned it, because it wasn't obvious. Well, it might be his final big call. Zinconagel departs. Max Lowe, his presence a real bonus to Forrest, enters the Wembley stage. His heart would have been in his mouth, wouldn't it, for a moment, as that penalty decision was being checked. Colback is now going to move into midfield. It's just how that 
The midfield is set up. Whether Garner goes and plays in what was Zinkenagel's role, as he has done on occasion. It's Thomas. Johnson back in there. It was met by Jordan Rhodes. He's certainly warm to the defensive tasks more as his career has gone on. Fifteen minutes plus at a time from Glory. From Nottingham Forest. Have they weathered the storm? Sorry, chasing. And I suppose inevitably in all circumstances he'll be penalised, but there's concern here over Sam Surridge, certainly at the very least. I think the wind was taken out of his sails. Well, Lee Nichols played a rolling ball. Had he not, you know, I think John Moss would have let that go because he knows this isn't a head injury. It's heavy coming together. A little look there, but it's just momentum, isn't it, from both of them, results in collision. Hopefully Sam Surridge will be OK. Well, you talk about fine lines and it's literally millimetres, isn't there, in this. Toffolo goes over, but it's just the way that Jack Colbert, he just hangs his leg out for a second. Toffolo takes it. Feels he was caught. If he was, it was minimal and not clear to the VAR. I'm pretty certain that John Moss would not have wished to be the the centre of debate on his farewell. And the eagle eyes of a fellow referee, Dermot Gallagher. They've got to reset here, Huddersfield, and go again, because they had that momentum, but that has just been taken away five minutes or so. Well, effectively, the VAR break has, has swung the, yeah. the game a little. Here's Holmes. Losing out as Warren who won it. Sort of mini Forest Derby battle there. And Holmes missed Derby's trip here three years ago. Situation. They've got nails left at the end of this, I'd be surprised. It's Holmes to hurl it in there. 
that's enticed Tom Lees forward and Levi Colwell. In the end, he'll keep them waiting just a moment longer. It's Toffolo who plays it in there. It's Lowe who makes the header. It's Garner who gets it away. But Hogg, who can start the building process again. Yeah, it wasn't a great ball by Jonathan Hogg to Pippa. The only way for him was backwards. Momentum lost a little. Russell. Here is Holmes. Oh, swiping it forward. Russell again to Dwayne Holmes. O'Brien. Toffolo, corner. They'll settle for that. Always a decent consolation for Huddersfield, isn't it? They've defended so well the whole game. Nottingham Forest protected Bruce Samba totally. Must keep that going to the end. specialists in terms of the attacking side against set piece specialists in terms of defending and Hogg has got free again he didn't get there and in the end it came off Jordan Rhodes who had uh, plenty of attention around him and uh, Forrest relieved this is where Called game management now, but Brees Samba will take as much time as John Moss will allow. He's given him the signal to get the hurry on John Moss. Toffolo. Oh, nobody, not enough bodies in the middle. It will happen too quickly. Oh, he couldn't get it out of harm's way. O'Brien. Oh, no. There's no appeal whatsoever from O'Brien. That's a good guide. Guided on to Jordan Rhodes' head. There's an appeal now. He just did enough, didn't he? Max Lowe put his body between Lewis O'Brien and the ball there, look, but it's clumsy. Legs. Oh, he does have... Do you know what? To me, that is a, they have a very good case for a penalty, but they're not going to get it. I thought there was contact to the legs there. Tangle of legs. Not sure it was even checked. They did look at it, we did not hear any uh, great hullabaloo from the Stockley Park end. Well, but maybe there should have been. Max Lowe's right leg there kicks the back of Lewis O'Brien's calf. And maybe Nottingham Forest are lucky, because look at the bodies between John Moss and he's peering, he's bending to try and peek round the corner. Can't see and you can't give what you can't see. But that was more of a penalty than the one that was debated earlier. Well, a break here because Brees Samba is down and uh, in a little difficulty. Groin area. And the uh, hero of the semi-final for Nottingham Forest, certainly hoping to... helping to prolong the agony here <laughs> in his misfortune. I, said, I, don't, I don't think Huddersfield have had a shot on target, unless I'm mistaken. I certainly can't remember one. And that's how well Nottingham Forest have defended. They've been organised, they've been resilient, and they have come under a little bit of pressure in the second half. They've held strong and they've protected the goal. And that will please Steve Cooper no end. Yeah. 
words today when uh, he would have to display resilience, and they certainly have done that. His semi-final heroics, Brees Samba. It was a paper-thin decision, really, in terms of keeping his place not that long ago. Ethan Horvath had the misfortune, purely because of logistics, to lose it after the March international break when he arrived home late from his duties with the United States. Brees Samba went in goal at Blackpool, where they produced one of their best performances of the season against a very good Blackpool team. And... Uh, Steve Cooper saw no reason to tinker after that. Well, he's really, really not moving well, the Forest goalkeeper, and if you're Huddersfield and you spot that, you really need to be trying to test him. Struggling. <laughs> His prayers are not far away from being answered. Yeah. You do not need a penny for those thoughts, do you? Free of charge. Holmes to hurl it. It was Cook who met it on that occasion. And Spence will prevent the corner. Dogged defending. to recall this season they produced their best defensive performance for us in the top two divisions since they were champions of England for the only time in 1978 they know how to do this second best record in the league wasn't it and Pippa it's got to that stage I mean that's a crazy crazy decision from Pippa what's he thinking that's what the manager's saying points to a watch that's wasting our time it's about keeping you cool because there is still time, but um, you are never going to score from there. It's just a really poor decision, and they know it. Look at Brissamba, he's nowhere near. Taking a goal kick, it took it a long time. In fact, Steve Cook has taken it for him. And here is Pippa. Shot really born of desperation. to get Brees Samba off. A couple of reasons, really. They don't want to do any unnecessary damage to himself, but if he can't deal with something, Huddersfield throw his way in the next minute or so. Can't risk it, can you? It only takes a ball over the top, and the goalkeeper that keeps the high line is normally so good at sweeping up. He wouldn't be able to do that. Russell, Hogg, Sorba Thomas, Lees into Holmes, Lees again, a bit of space for O'Brien to use. I'm really surprised he didn't elect to have a touch and get the ball in. state of health but grabbing the ball reducing the building of momentum and Ethan Horvath cruelly deposed as I mentioned earlier in the season when he was producing excellent form in the forest goal will play a cameo role Brees Samba using every trick in the book taking the longer walk when he could just go off behind the goal probably means is that Forest fans won't like the number that comes up on that board. Might 
would be relatively hefty. So Ethan Horvath from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, makes only his tenth first-team appearance for Nottingham Forest. A cameo role he surely would not have expected to play. Oh dear. That's what these occasions do to you. They can be agony, but there is ecstasy for someone. Well, it's been quite a sporting weekend. There was for Huddersfield a disappointment for the Giants in the Rugby League Challenge Cup final at Tottenham yesterday. An opportunity for the football team to lift their spirits, and there is still time for that to happen. That's a response from the Huddersfield fans. That's why I was really surprised that Pippa elected to shoot, because it's a long time. And it will be sheer agony for those bedecked in red. And they'll be all right as long as the ball is in the opposition half. Away by Cook. from Joe Warren, you wouldn't expect anything else. Can reach out and touch the Premier League here. Yeah, he could have been having agreed terms on a move back in August. He could have been there this season, but stuck with the Forest cause. And is not far away from his reward. His Premier League opportunity will not be far away, whatever happens in the next few minutes here, Lewis O'Brien. An outstanding figure who deserves that chance. The longest five minutes of your life, isn't it? And that's just for us, I think. <laughs> Tension of the occasion. Steve Cook away. What a great addition he has been. Real difficult time with his dad being taken seriously ill at the big game against Bournemouth recently. And we wish his father well. Topolo. certainly do from this point of view. I'm saying, when the ball's at that end of the pitch, Forest fans can just breathe easy, if only for a few seconds. Driving, and driving into traffic. Thomas O'Brien! Well, my only surprise here is that Jordan Rhodes has not anticipated this. Because if he sets off a yard earlier, Jordan Rhodes, he has got a tap in. You watch at the far post as this ball drifts. Coming in, now look. He just doesn't gamble, doesn't anticipate, and that's really unlike Jordan Rhodes. Well, his anticipation was spot on in the semi-final in a not dissimilar position. And the Forest Anthem. The sound of Malav Kintyre. And the full voice for a moment. We'll certainly be hearing it full-throated fashion if Huddersfield can't produce something in the next couple of minutes. His heart will be beating. A thousand mark beats a minute. 
I suspect, because time is running out, the clock is ticking, it has been a magnificent season regardless, but this will hurt. Oh so close, but you don't get prizes for being oh so close. And the pain can be greater than anything else in football, missing out in the playoffs. Yates, whose presence effectively forced the goal, which looks increasingly likely to guide Nottingham Forest back to the Premier League. The whole generation has grown up without Premier League football at Nottingham Forest. Wembley trips used to be an annual, sometimes biannual yeah, affair at yeah. one stage. It's been overdue, hasn't it? an understatement this is it now this is it all as Carlos Corbron waving everybody forward doesn't matter now if they concede another one a season in 30 seconds here everything Resting on this. And Jed Spence meets it. Dwayne Holmes. It's a painful one. He's just trying to do the right thing, which is help it back into an area, Dwayne Holmes. But it's on his weaker foot and he can't control it. And that, you suspect, will be that. Corbran, very gracious. It is Nottingham Forest time again. A generation has grown up without Premier League football at the City Ground, but they will experience it once again. The first European Cup came 43 years ago tomorrow. The second, 42 years ago, yesterday, it is another glory day in May for Nottingham Forest. They've had to show real resilience all the way. A desperate start to the campaign. That's why Steve Cooper is here. He picked up the reins when they were rooted to the bottom of the table. At the end of the season in May, they chase the ecstasy of playoff triumph and they claim the ultimate prize. They feel like they've been playing knockout football for some time now. And they've certainly got a taste for it. Sometimes it's been brilliant, but it was all about digging in here, Don. Yeah, I have to say, Steve Cooper's post-match interview after they progressed in the second leg against Sheffield United summed the playoffs up and what it takes to win a playoffs absolutely perfectly. You've got to play well, you've got to be resilient, you've got to dig deep, you've got to ride your luck at times, and you've got to keep battling and plowing on and see where it takes you. Well, they've got the dream ticket now. And you have to say on the balance of play, really, there wasn't an awful lot in it, but if one team probably edged it, it probably was Nottingham Forest. And I think the stars of the show were their defenders, I have to say. Not a single shot on target for a Nottingham Forest goalkeeper to have to deal with that in a playoff final is perfect defending. Congratulations to them, commiserations to Huddersfield. And just before we saw Jordan Smith there, now my mind goes back right now to five years ago, the final day of the season. Forest were playing for survival in the championship. They could easily have gone down to League One. He made a stunning save from Dominic Samuel of Ipswich at 0-0. They went on to win the game. Had he not made that save, who knows what might have happened. Well, he looks all right now. The adrenaline does wonderful things. Reese Samba in 
enjoying the dance. And the feeling sweeter for the length of the way for those Forest supporters. 23 years. You go back to the days of Ron Atkinson walking into the wrong dugout at the city ground. A, a desperate season after they have briefly enjoyed the high life again under Frank Clark after the end of the incomparable Brian Clough era. But the message from Wembley is that Forest are back. Well, this is exactly what this means to this bunch of supporters that have travelled down from the East Midlands. 23 years away from the Premier League, this generation of Forest players has made a little bit of history here. They've taken the team back to the Premier League for the first time this century. This will mean a lot to the players, it'll mean a lot to the players and the players' families and the fans. It'll mean a hell of a lot to this man. Let's get the thoughts of Joe Worrell. Well done, Joe. Congratulations as a lifelong Forest fan and the Forest captain. Now, what does this mean to you to be taking Nottingham Forest back to the Premier League? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'm just so proud, so, so proud of the, of the players, of the staff, fans. Uh, yeah, we've, we've been fantastic all season. I thought. Uh, Really unlucky, really, really unlucky to not go up automatically, in my opinion. I thought we were really good value. We played with honesty, we played football the right way. Um, and look, incredible, incredible. There has been a yearning from the fans to get back to the top division. Have you felt that more and more as the season's progressed? Yeah, we've. Uh, we're, like I keep saying, we've, we've been really good, and uh, it's not just this season. I'm not saying we've been good in the past seasons because we have, we've been shy. But it's been a long time coming that this club hasn't been in the top flight, and uh, seen a lot, of, a lot of good people come and go, and they've all added to a little bit, half a percent, to um, to, to this football club, and. Uh, such a such an honour to the captain Forrest. Joe, it's understandable with your emotions, but we must apologise for your language there. <laughs> what about today's game? Second half, Huddersfield got on the ball a bit more, but were you always confident that you could see it out? Uh, yeah, we we don't mind suffering. We've suffered for a long time off the pitch, so half an hour is. It's nothing compared to uh, what we've suffered for, for so many years. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say a big thanks to everybody who's helped us. Everybody. Uh, I'll forget names if I even attempt to reel them off. But we've been really, really, really good value this season. And uh, I'm just so, so proud, especially for the manager. Um, such, a, such a nice bloke. And he's, he's failed twice in the playoffs before and I'm absolutely made up for him. You can see it in his eyes when he talks to you in the, in the dressing room, around the, around the place. He calls me on my days off and I'm Steve Cooper, I what's he want? And he's just checking, checking up on me, he checks up on all the players and he's fantastic. These little things that the people don't know about, um, really, really nice, genuine man and I'm made up for him. You, you were bottom of the league when he took over, so what on earth has he done to you? Uh, Given his unbear belief, I, I keep using the the, uh, the expression of like a like a whipped dog. If you if you treat any any dog with kindness, then you they, they become a, a, a nice dog. You know what I mean? If you if you mistreat one, then they're they're aggressive. And we were we've been a mistreated team. And I think he's come in and he's he's uh, given us that hope, given us that belief. And he's uh, just been so nice. He's just kill killed us with kindness, and the fans absolutely adore him. Absolutely adore him. And um, I've made up for him. He's fantastic. He must be feeling so, so happy, and he deserves every single quarter that comes his way because he's been in Manus. Every dog has its day. It's your day today, Joe. Well done. Congratulations. Go and enjoy it. Thank you. Cheers.
I get the sense that he will enjoy it very, very late into the night. Articulate, passionate, empathetic, thoughtful, kind, caring. The type of leader Nottingham Forest fans absolutely love. Another one that they absolutely love is getting lots of love here. Pitch down as we watch Steve Cooper, Bree Samba take the plaudits, the deserved plaudits. This team, this group of men has made Nottingham proud. Stuart Pearce, can you try and sum this up? I think uh, the Forest captain there summed it up really well. I, th I think he spoke very well. Him, McKenna and Cook went to see the opposition at the end of the game, which I think was a classy touch by all three of them. And the stadium's bouncing now, and Nottingham Forest will be a massive credit to the Premier League next year. Let's spare a thought to Huddersfield. And, um, you know, deservedly well done, really well getting here today. But I think probably over 90 minutes, the better side won. So it was a closely fought game, and it's heartbreak, of course, for the Huddersfield Town players. Couldn't repeat the heroics of 2017. But Joby McEnough, Nottingham Forest, they've not seen Premier League football this century. Listen, we're very, very privileged to be at games like this, occasions like this. And I've got to be honest, I don't see, think I've seen a reaction like this. I mean, literally, the place has gone absolutely ballistic, as you can hear. And it feels, perhaps, like 23 years worth of pain and suffering and heartache has just erupted, exploded. All the emotions are coming out. And listen, it is a fantastic football club that has suffered. These fans have suffered. They go week in, week out. And it's just great to see them being able to share this moment. Brilliant, brilliant scenes and fully, fully deserved over the season. Yes, but also today they came and executed the game plan the best. Hef, of course, let's just part the Huddersfield hat for just a second. We'll come on to them in due course. The Terry is terrific over the course of the season. But how does it feel to win at Wembley in the playoff final? What are they feeling now? Big congratulations to Nottingham Forest, such a massive club. You see just the supporters here. They obviously deserve Premier League too. It means a lot for all the players. And I think it zooms it up that Steve Cooper comes to Nottingham Forest, sort them out and and, and they deserve it. You have to say this, With, without a doubt, without a doubt. This man, he deserves any every praise. Because I, I, I texted him when he when he take over this job. If you can turn around Nottingham Forest and you get them to the Premier League, you're maybe the next gaffer from England, you know, as a laugh. Because I thought he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it because there is like something around the place that you never will arrive in the Premier League. But he did it. He did it. And big praise to Nottingham Forest. Well done. The main gist, of course, is playing the game, not the occasion, Stuart. Now they can celebrate the occasion, can't they, Nottingham Forest? I certainly can, and, well, listen, the atmosphere inside the stadium's quite incredible. I'm not sure I, I ever played at Wembley in a Forest team that had this sort of atmosphere. That's how much it means to this football club. They've waited a hell of a long time to actually get back into the Premier League. And, well, certainly myself, you, that have been there and stepped out of the city ground, very, very proud of their achievement. It's certainly a moment to share, it's a moment to savour. If you were a Forest fan, this is a moment of pure euphoria. Joe Warrell making his way up the Wembley steps. He has captained Nottingham Forest back to the Premier League via the playoff final. For the trophy lift, Don Goodman and Daniel Mann. supporters as loud as I'm sure you have ever heard in a playoff final goal. Yeah, I've been coming here since 2007, my first playoff final, championship playoff final, and I covered this guy's sports. That final whistle, that's the loudest reaction. The hair's on the back of my neck stood up, and I've been there and seen it and heard it all before, but not quite like that. I mean, it's been an incredible barren spell for Nottingham Forest, but the drought is over. And if ever a club deserved it, I think we have to concede this club deserve it. Well, it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. And uh, what a reputation he is building, a reputation burnished still further. Steve Cooper to this club when they were very much on their knees on the bottom of the table. They were 
close, they pushed for automatic promotion and when you miss out on that, there's often the potential that the heartache is just too great to get over, but they've got over it quickly enough. Brilliant performance at Bramall Lane in the semi-final, a different kind of performance today, but in many ways just as good. as a Nottingham Forest captain. The Huddersfield players gathered on the pitch watching them. Lewis Scrappen is the club captain, we shouldn't forget. But absent through injury. <laughs> well, maybe a touch of relief that it's all over. They've got through the game. He said, you can do everything right and still end up on the losing side on an occasion like this. His old club pretty much did that last night, Liverpool against Real Madrid in Paris. But they have got it right. They managed to keep their opponents at arm's length and do enough themselves to win the game. And that is what it's all about. Steve Cook, he's uh, done it the old-fashioned way. It's a different and very enjoyable experience. One or two famous faces in the Royal Box, it would be fair to say. Johnny Owen and Vicky McClure there. A few legendary Forest names in there, including our old friend Gary Bertels as well, who has enjoyed this occasion more than most, I'm sure. The wheels of the Skybacks! Well, here we go. It is a new beginning for Nottingham Forest! Well, it may not be a European Cup, but for this generation, it's their Munich, it's their Madrid, it's their moment again. England's elite will be heading to the city ground again. And what a roar awaits them. A season that began wreathed in despair and difficulty ends in ecstasy. The financial prize is huge, but the football prize is as big as it gets. And it belongs to Nottingham Forest. And it is richly deserved. What a moment for these Nottingham Forest players. There's not a single free Nottingham Forest seat in their side of Wembley. Every single Reds fan has stayed, every single Reds fan has stayed here to watch these players lift this trophy, which confirms their return to the Premier League for the first time in 23 years. Bottom of the table, Stuart, when Steve Cooper took over. Now they're in the Premier League. Well, I think that's the most exciting thing about today's victory. The dedication, turning the team around, uh, getting the results that they needed just to get here, you know, and that's certainly credit to Steve Cooper. He'll take all the, the plaudits and come probably tomorrow morning. He'll have his eye on the Premier League and a potential building protest, process to keep Forest in the league. Joby, we saw the game against Bournemouth just a few weeks ago when they were going for second. That doesn't matter now at all, does it? No, it doesn't, but I spoke to Steve Cooper after that and he said as long as we take something from that night, as long as we learn from the experience, he understands they've got young players in the squad and he felt that that could help them a little bit further down the line in the playoffs, in big games and learn how to handle big occasions and I think they certainly did take something from that. My God, this is a very noisy Wembley stadium. And quite rightly so, if you're going to celebrate once in a generation success, why not do it right here at the home of football, in the biggest game in domestic football? It's Nottingham Forest promoted back to the Premier League. Big game today, big, big games coming up for you on Sky Sports. On Wednesday, Scotland take on Ukraine in that playoff semi-final for the World Cup qualifiers at 7 p.m. Then next Sunday, the winners of that game will face Wales. 4 p.m. Sky Sports Football. 
and the second season of The Flight Attendant. All episodes available now on Sky Max. My word, it is loud here in at Wembley Stadium. This is what it means to the players. This is what it means to the fans. Listen to this, Nottingham Forest fans. You are back in the Premier League. So to is Garner. Garner to Whippy. Forest breakthrough, and what a priceless breakthrough it could prove to be. It is Nottingham Forest time again. A generation has grown up without Premier League football at the City Ground, but they will experience it once again. Sheer emotion on Steve Cooper's face and a very simple message on that Nottingham Forest flag. They are indeed going up. They've won the Sky Bet Championship playoff final by the solitary goal, and that's all it needed to send them back to the Premier League for the first time in 23 years. Scott McKenna was the man of the match. Here he is now. Scott, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Can you put it into words for us? No, I don't think I can put it into words quite yet. Um, I don't think it was the best of games, but the main thing was we got the result and uh, we won promotion. And you did it, did it for a, a fans, a sea of red today, 23 years outside the Premier League. C could you feel their desperation, determination to get back there? Yeah, we felt it um, ever since we won the semi-final against Sheffield United. The atmosphere about the town, around the city ground, it's been exceptional. So for, um, for us to uh, put on a performance, for all the fans that uh, have turned out today, it's brilliant. It could have been automatic promotion, you were very close near the end of the season, but this is the best way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, from where we were at the start of the season, we had no right to win automatic promotion, so doing it this way was, uh, was a great way to do it anyway. It has been an incredible turnaround this season since Steve Cooper came in. What, what have been the major differences that he's implemented? I think he just gave all the players confidence. He's freed the players at the top end of the pitch up and ultimately they've won us the games. And you've experienced some special times at the city ground, especially this season, but what is it going to be like having Premier League football there? I can't even imagine what it's going to be like, but um, it's something we're all looking forward to. Well done, Scott, you're the Sky Bet man of the match. There you go, cheers, you congratulations. Thank you. Scott McKenna aptly there describing just what this season has meant to Nottingham Forest, given where they were when Steve Cooper took over. And these are nice moments, aren't they? Really enjoying themselves. And why the hell not? You've got the players there that play such a key role. Steve Cook, Brendan Johnson, Bree Samba, the hero of the semi-final second leg. The champagne is definitely going inside that trophy. And I've got a feeling that won't be very empty over the course of the evening. Ryan Yates also there playing a key role. That's the big question, isn't it, Stuart? I mean, you've seen teams climb up into the Premier League, walk the division, etc., etc. This, to me, looks like the best way ever to get into the Premier League. There's no doubt about that. On a one-off occasion, this is a wonderful, wonderful way of getting promoted, especially the way Forrest have done it, especially with Forrest White and their history as well, <laughs> you know, going back into the 70s when Cluffy Gold of this team. But... This team now, it's their job and these group of players and the manager's job to create the next chapter of history in Nottingham Forest. And it's important, Michael, isn't it? Football, the championship, it's a long, hard season with lots of demands, lots of commitment. These moments have to be enjoyed properly, don't they? It is a brutal league and to arrive in the Premier League, phew, what an achievement and you have to celebrate now here. You see Ryan Yates, what a great <laughs> lad he is. Yeah. I played with him. It this does everything right, you know? And now this is the moment where you just enjoy the supporters, soak in the atmosphere, because mm. this is amazing. This achievement, mamma mia, mamma mia. <laughs> but again, Joby, when you see all the players here get involved, Steve Cooper obviously leading them back to the promise. And we just saw Joe Lolly there, didn't we, as well? Yeah. He's played a key role in this kind of holding pattern. For Forrest until Steve Cooper came in, took them over, evolved them, got them back there. This is a huge team ethic, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And every single person there, not just the players, 
has played a part and I think this is why these days are so special because there'll be a lot of people behind the scenes that do so much work to get those lads out ready for games, ready for finals, that don't necessarily get the credit. So it's a really massive day to, for everyone to get involved, say thanks from a playing point of view for all that hard work. And it's a day that everyone can enjoy, share and look back on because that's the big thing. We don't always have these big highs in our careers. You get to the end of it, these are the ones that really stick with you. You know, in however many years time, it's something that you've done as a group that you can always look back on and enjoy. Well, the players are quite rightly enjoying themselves. Ryan Yates has joined us today, uh, Today, just now. We just saw him celebrating in front of that. And apologies for shouting it, Ryan. I'm going to have to shout. Yeah, this is insane. insane. This is absolutely crazy. Can you tell me at all how it feels? I've lost my voice. But if you do Sorry, that, well, we might have had a chat. I've about lost my voice, to be honest. It's incredible. Yeah. They're incredible. We come out for the warm up. Yeah. Incredible, they've been like this all season at the city ground, travelled in their numbers, this is for them. And it's propelled you on, hasn't it, over the course of the season. As a team, as an individual, you've just got better and better and better. And you peaked here at the right time. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we peaked, I don't think it was our best performance, okay. but it was probably better than our second half against uh, <laughs> Sheffield United. Yeah. Um, we got that goal and then naturally second half, I think we're always going to sort of sit in that low mid-block. Yeah. Um, you know, we defended really, really well and, and didn't look too, too much of a threat. They didn't create too many chances. Any nerves at all over the course of the second half? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, yeah. A um, couple of times, uh, me, me especially, lost the ball a couple of times from cheap turnovers. Um, you know, and, and teams like Huddersfield can punish you on the counter-attack. Luckily, they didn't today. and. And we're just absolutely buzzing. <laughs> I can tell by the look on your face. I mean, Ryan's really endeared himself to the whole of the Nottingham Forest faithful. Stuart Pearce, of course, was a man who's a legend in that part of the world. And Stuart, what we've seen from Ryan, what we've seen from the team today as a whole, it was about managing expectation. And Ryan in the heart of the midfield helped to temper that, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. I think you mentioned the, uh, the Sheffield United, the second leg. I think that probably would have settled the nerves a little bit, you know, got, got it out of the system, if you like. After winning the first leg, sometimes the second leg's not so good. I think that probably helped the occasion with the boys, but certainly what we've seen from afar anyway, there's been some, such good times at the city ground this year with a cup run and various other games, you know. You could see it brewing and the excitement brewing from afar, so fantastic achievement and big impact next year, hopefully. Honestly, I can't wait. I'm already looking forward to it, to be honest. Um, it's going to be extremely difficult. We're going to make signings, but you know, bring it on. We haven't been in the Premier League for 20 plus years, so you know, let's just go and attack it. <laughs> right, Ryan, you know what it's like coming through the academy as a local boy, not just for the football club, but for the city. How big is this? Yeah, we, we needed this. We needed this massively. Um, in terms of the football club, it's been, it's been, you know, it's, there's been some dark days, um, especially since I saw broke into the first team. You know, I was with Hef in the dressing room, and he'll tell you it, it wasn't the best of times. We weren't getting the best results. What we a great banter, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great banter, but terrible results. <laughs> no uh, match for that. <laughs> you deserve this, Ryan, my friend. You deserve this. You work so hard. Now tell me, what are you doing now? This is the most important question. <laughs> Forget about the game. Now, what is the match plan after the game? Yeah, recovering, recovering. Yes! <laughs> no, we're not. We're out tonight for sure. We need to party. I need to forget about football. God, ever since, say, the Fulham game, when we had a chance, we kept winning, kept winning. We had a chance of automatic promotion. Went to Bournemouth and, you know, we didn't perform. Um, I think the occasion got the better of us. Um, but, like, that, that, that's, you know, puts in really good shape in this sort of game. Um, you know, when we don't step up and, and try and play and, you know, we go long and, you know, that's not us. We need to try and build from the back, get people out of position, and, and we tried to do that today, and that was a big learning curve, that game. Ryan, I'll be honest, this is way too much detail for you. You've got some <laughs> celebrating, you know. Give yeah, me your well. microphone. Go and celebrate, my friend. Congratulations, well done. Ryan, yeah, it's their key part to get Nottingham Forest back to the Premier League. Also a key part, Jack Colback, who's now talking to Jonathan Oakes. Yeah, what a season it's been. How do you sum up your emotions now that it's ended in promotion? Yeah, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm lost for words, really. We've, we've worked so hard all season. Obviously, the start of the season we had was, was a dreadful.
said 4-1. Uh, the new manager comes in. And from then on, we've just we've just took small steps, open, 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 to end it, yeah. And to get the right result, it's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. When Steve Cooper came in and you were bottom of the table, what did you think was possible this season? It was still early on, but it's been extraordinary, hasn't it? Yeah, well, listen, when he came in, set targets, the first target was to get above the dark line, obviously relegation, uh, and we did that quite quickly, and then after that it was just game by game, um, and we seem to be winning a lot of games, but never really, you know, we were never getting in the playoffs, um, and we eventually got in, we ended up dropping out, and it's like one of them, can we do it? But we just kept going, and we kept going, and it takes a lot to come from where we were, we had automatics in sight, and then we, we didn't quite get that. You've got to get all the disappointment of that and go again. And it's what we've done, and it's a credit to everyone involved, to, to the Gap High staff, to the players, the fans, everyone around the club. That you know, the staff you don't see behind the scenes. Um, this is this is for everyone involved in Nottingham, and um, you know, I, I'm so pleased that we can give something back. Playoff final is such a big occasion. There's so much hanging on it. So what was it like to play in today? And how did you win it? I enjoyed the first half. First half, I thought we dominated. Um, they came with a game plan to sit back. Obviously, we're, we're very threatening on the counter, so you could see they were sitting in. Second half, they had a change and they came out. Um, but I felt like we were in control the whole 90 minutes. We obviously didn't play as well as we could second half, but in a case like this, it's about winning the game, and um, that's what we did. And that penalty appeal, the long VAR check. <laughs> How much of a relief was that? Was there any contact from you? He caught, he caught my, I caught my fall. But I felt straight away like he's initiated the contact. Well, still, when you know you've, you've caught him, I'm thinking someone behind the screen might say it differently, you know, so they weren't, they weren't the best, to be honest, but thankfully it went in our favour, so yeah. Is. Nottingham Forest, such a, a famous club, back in the Premier League now. And, and do you think you've got to, to play for the club as, uh, to really understand how special this club is? I have, yeah, especially this season. Um, you know, I've, I've been here a good few years now, and the aim was always promotion, and we never quite did it. Um, we've had some bad spells where it's been tough, but as a player, You've got to stay level, you know, because things can change and then us as players have got to give something back to, to, to gain the fans coming like this. And, you know, it felt like a home game today, to be fair. And they've been different cast all season. Um, but, yeah, the history of the club, the, the managers always remind us of what a big club it is. And, you know, to get to the Premier League after so long and, you know, the boys in there, there's a lot, a lot of young lads and then I said to them before, I said, you know, you might not achieve anything as, as big as this. Um, and it was up to us to go and grab it and we did that. Thank you, Jack. Go and enjoy it. Top bye. Thank you. Cheers. And they are certainly going to enjoy themselves tonight, the Nottingham Forest players in front of the end where the Nottingham Forest fans are packed into Wembley. A real sense of the reflection of the team spirit, the collective commitment involved in what is meant to be a Nottingham Forest player this season get themselves back into the Premier League. And of course the players are very important, but the most important man, as always, <laughs> Steve Cooper, the manager. Steve, congratulations. Any way at all that you can put this into words how it feels? Probably not at the moment. Maybe I'll be a bit more articulate in, in the days coming. Um, really pleased for the players, really pleased for the supporters. I thought we played well first half, mm. apart from being too creative um, and then we got the of all the good goals we've scored this season we get one like that but it doesn't matter and we've managed to see it through you know um, in the second half but everybody connected with the football club you'll know as much as me deserves it today and uh, you know we're really looking forward now to a positive future there, there was a great shot of you at the end sat on your own in the dugout and it, I could feel the relief pouring out of your body, going and sitting down, taking a minute. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Is that cementing what this means to you? This this feeling's going to last a lifetime, surely. Uh, pride, I think, more than yeah, relief, of course, but pride. I mean, I, I love being at this football club. Mm. It's, it's, listen, it isn't about me, but it's changed my life. Yeah. You know, professionally, anyway. Um, and you know, my family are here. 
and the players' families are here and the supporters are here. So it was just, Stuart will tell you more, and you know better than me, that this football club for me is about belonging of a city and it comes together on a match day. And, you know, we brought Nottingham to Wembley today and took over the place and here we are in the Premier League. We spoke about it before kickoff, didn't we, Stuart, about this side standing on the shoulders of Giants, yeah. but they are right in their own history now, the history that players like you helped to create. Yeah, well, more importantly, it's about what history has created. It's about today, it's about tomorrow, mm. and it's about the future for this football club. Today, the future looks very rosy. There's been some dark times, let's say, potentially, with the club not being able to get back into the Premier mm. League. So you can't understate what this man next to us has done by getting the club back up. To try and get it up, a lot of people before him have tried and failed. It's not easy going into a football club with a big, big reputation that Cluffy started many, mm. many years ago. But listen, you should be very, very proud of this achievement, I think. Unbelievable job, isn't it? Unbelievable. I just want to go back to the fans and the the history behind the football club, Steve. You've embraced it. Mm. You know, you've gone and you've, you've found old legends. You've embraced them. You've brought them in. How important has that been to you to maybe take that burden away from the players and embrace it and use it well, to spur I, you on? Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. And I don't quite understand why you wouldn't do that, you know? And um, you walk in and it smells of history and tradition and the photos that you see, this man's, you know, all over the place. and. Embrace it, like you said, stand on the shoulders and try and create a positive next step because this football club is built on positive eras like that. So we want to be proud of that. We are proud of it. And uh, But at the same time, we've got to think about what if. What if we can get to the Premier League? What if we can play some attractive football? What if we can develop young players and, and give them opportunities to thrive on a big stage? And that's what we've done, you know? With a commitment and an attitude to not get beat, to stand up for for the club, for the city, for each other. And um, yeah, we, we deserve this today. There's no doubt about that. We deserve it. <laughs> no, no, no. no, we were sorry. We were all tempted there, just looking behind us. That's the sense of camaraderie. I thought... <laughs> Yeah, I know I said Steve, do it. You gotta, so, that's, sorry, that's paying the price for being popular, Steve. You're obviously too nice to him. Well, I said don't do it, and he said do it. So <laughs> thanks for the not before his connection there, Stu. Uh, past and present. Uh. That shows exactly what you've created, doesn't it? Uh, the culture. There's, there's a synergy between you the, all. The culture's been been amazing. How mm. can I talk normally now? <laughs> the culture's been been amazing. You know, we, we've had many setbacks along the way, and all the players done is respond. We've only lost two games on the bounce, I think. Mm. Um, you know, so. The, the players deserve this, it, you know, it's, for me, you know, recovering from setbacks defines who you are, mm. you know, and, and, you know, it's what I haven't mentioned yet is, is credit to Huddersfield, yeah. I, I was stood here. Tough, like, tough game, like, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, they've been brilliant this year. Mm. Carlos is an outstanding coach. <laughs> <laughs> there's not only one Steve Cooper, there's two Steve Coopers, there's another one flying yeah, around somewhere. It, 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 you know, Carlos is an outstanding coach, we have a lot of respect for each other, we do actually speak to each other. <laughs> Um, and we knew it was going to be a tough game, mm. you know, they set up tactically, they test you. But we, we really needed to go into the game today, believing in how we play, how we, how we work. And, and in the end, that's what we've done. And the first half really is, mm. is, for me, was the most important phase in winning the game. The most relieved man in that bundle just then was Michael Heffler, given what he's wearing and the shoes that he's got on as well. Yeah. He no stayed comments. well aware. Steve Cooper was on his own then. There was no help at all <laughs> from the Heff, was there? But what a job this man's done. Stevie, honestly, brilliant job. Thanks, Mike. You see the team spirit, what you created, not just with the team, as well with the supporters. Yeah. When you stepped in, you were bottom of the table. How did you the buy-in buy -in for all the players and all the supporters? I just, well, I just, like... Because you it, changed it, it's everything. A, it, it's a difficult world now. Being, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great world and a glamorous world being a footballer and a manager. But it's also a harsh and spiteful one as well. And I, uh, and I just wanted these players to know that I'm the biggest supporter and, and I will love them and give them everything through thick and thin. Doesn't mean I'm soft with them, doesn't mean I'm not demanding and challenging, I'm probably the hardest at that. They would laugh to, to hear me say what I just said. But in the end, you know, everybody, everybody loves to be loved, doesn't they? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what we've tried to do with these, mm. with these players. We've just really got behind them, 
you know, and um, stuck with them, give, a, give them a lot of time. Coaching staff have been amazing. Yeah. Alan Tate, Stephen mm. Reid, Danny Olcock, Stephen Rands, they've stuck with me, Dave Tivy as well, and, um, you know, we, we've put a plan in place and, and it's worked. Well, Steve, I mean, following your career today has been a joy. World Cup winner, of course, with under-17s, moving mountains with Swansea, now climbing Everest with Nottingham Forest. You need to go and celebrate with your team. You it's been an first. absolute... Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a towel, but we've run out. But yeah. well done, no, mate. Thanks, All the very best in the Premier League as well. As well. Really Steve Cooper it. there, the man, Lovely the mastermind you. behind Thank Nottingham you. Forest, climbing back Thanks, into right. the Premier League for the first time in 23 years. A close game here at Wembley, a thrilling game at Wembley. They've gone up as the Championship playoff final winners. Wembley, of course, is the only place if you are a winner, and that's what Nottingham Forest are today. And in any other kind of setting or public setting, if you had a group of people screaming psycho at you, you'd get worried. But considering I'm stood next to Stuart Pearce and the Forest fans are just behind this camera, everything is absolutely fine. Let's get stuck into some of our analysis now. There was a goal in the game, a solitary goal in the game. Levi Colwell with the unfortunate own goal turning into his own net. I mean, Lee Nichols has been superb this season in goal, hasn't he, for Huddersfield, Michael? But what we saw here, we're talking to Stu about it at half-time. What else can he do as a defender? He's got to put himself there, hasn't he? Yeah, you've got to defend somehow. Unfortunately, this is, this is just a deflection, very unlucky. You should stay in the line, and then it's just like nearly, Lee Nichols can't do anything. Maybe, maybe go a little bit further mm. up, don't let him shoot, you know. Um, but it's just, yeah. Yeah, not good at all. What should I say? What should I say? I think they'll be a little bit disappointed with giving a goal away that cheaply, personally. You know, it's. Uh, I don't think the back line probably squeezed up quick enough or in line with the ball, so they'll be disappointed on the back of that. In a game such as this, Joby, it is the fine margins, of course, isn't it, where a game of this magnitude can be decided on this. It is, and listen, I'm going to give credit to the attackers, as I always do, perhaps the delivery, whether it's a shot, whether it's a cross, but it's into an area. There was a few times in that first half where they turned out they didn't make mm. Huddersfield have to defend situations. That's a ball fizzed in. Levi Cole then has to deal with it. Ryan Yates makes a really good run, again, making him have to defend the situation. And sometimes you make your luck. You know, you take that gamble, you make that run into the box, and he's certainly done that. We do make a look in games such as this. But, Michael, we're going to look at two incidents now, which I'm sure Huddersfield Town, when they do look back on these, given how tight this game was, is it the nicest way to say that they'll be scratching their heads? Well, Prutz, you see this here very clearly. If, 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 if the ref must can't see it and his team can't see it which is poor mm. then obviously we got VAR for such a big game the richest game in football and they have to see it this is unacceptable that you that you don't give here a penalty because it's a clear touch it's a clear touch and I'm not here a bad loser or whatsoever but this is a clear penalty and how on earth the guys from the VAR can't mm. see this shocking shocking Stuart what's your take on what you've seen there um, I think there's contact. Mm. I personally would have given a penalty on the back of that. I think that there's a, an element of frustration that the referee wasn't asked to go to his monitor and, and recheck it. But I think people at Stockwell Park, probably Stockley Park, probably hide behind the mm. statement of clear and obvious this day and age. I mean, even I mean, there's two words obviously that are quite concise words. Together, it's quite a vague concept, don't you think? Clear and obvious. Yeah, I mean. We thought that VAR would clear a, a lot of incidents up. It has on the offside rule and the handball, but it certainly hasn't on situations like this mm. where there'll be a lot of people with diverse opinions on this. Mm. All three of us and yourself probably mm. think that that was a penalty. Stuart, I got a question for you, because you obviously left back. Harry Toffolo arrives in the box. Yeah. Could be you as well. Mm. And if you get chopped down, 
in this stage of the game, mm. you will bite his head off if you don't get like, a penalty there. Yeah. Right or wrong? There's no doubt that mm. I think Huddersfield will go, go away this evening and, and be very you know, disappointed that that's not been given as a penalty. But that wasn't the only, obviously, uh, debatable decision which came towards the end of a very, very tight game. There was another situation, Joby, that, again, we're going to talk about several times and look at from several different angles. Take it on its own merits. Yeah. Is this one a penalty? I think there's two ways to look at it. For, for me, there's definitely contact. It's how that contact is initiated. Does Lewis O'Brien just stop and maybe his leg goes into Max Lowe or is it the other way around? Listen, that is a tough, tough call. I think a lot harder than the first one. I certainly would have given the first one. But again, you know, there was no check. There was no time for the referee to go. For mm. me, if you've got VAR, use it. You know, we don't have it in a regular season. Yeah. We've got it here for this specific purpose that like have spoken about it how much is at stake for football clubs financially and everything else that goes into it and sometimes the refs just need that little bit of a breather themselves things are happening so quickly yeah. we've seen it a few times it's a tough one to to figure out just go and look at the monitor take a few minutes and then make your decision i think then we could all live with that decision a little bit better hef come on definitely if we have the technology here mm -hmm. then we have to use it definitely because you can't judge everything right this is not what I'm well, saying. I mean, that's yeah. there you, specifically to help the referees. You, you can that make technology. mistakes as a referee mm. because emotions, uh, you have to run and whatsoever. You can miss some stuff. But for this game, the VAR is here and you don't give a penalty. If you don't give the first one, then it, you just give this mm. one because you, you know you did a mistake at the first place. Mm. And shocking. It's just shocking. And Huddersfield got dropped here. To come away from those two specific incidents and the debate about VAR. No shot on target for Huddersfield Town, Stuart. Yeah. We saw the second leg against Luton where Luton were very, very good in that game as well. What did you make of their performance overall today? You talk about games such as this, we build it up, we talk about it. It's about not leaving anything out there. Mm. Can Huddersfield look at themselves and say that? Um, I, I'm not sure both teams would come away from Wembley today and say we played really mm. well today, either team. It was all about the result today. The occasion gets the players on it, you know, and, and I don't think probably either team played of their best, mm. certainly. But I don't think that stat, you know, doesn't lie in many mm. ways, you know. And, and the fact that a Forest defender ended up getting man of the match, you know, did that play part of it? But listen, if one of those penalty awards went the other way, all mm. of a sudden we're, we're probably, we might be cheering on a different victor at the mm. end of this game. That's the heartbreaking thing, Job, isn't it? All the work that's gone into what a championship season is. And you get to the end. There was a sense of relief, and Steve Cooper was talking about crying at the end. What's the feeling in Huddersfield's dressing room being that close? Well, firstly, thanks for reminding me that I've been through it myself, perhaps. <laughs> but um, no, on a serious note, having been in there on that side of things, it is heartbreaking. You know, it was my certainly lowest point of my career. Mm. You know, everything building up to the game, everything around it, what is at stake, what's potentially next, you know, trying to get that jump up to the Premier League. And it takes a long, long time to get over. Listen, I shed a few tears. I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, mm. you know, as did a lot of the other lads and, and people around the football club. And I'm sure there will be a few in there. But once the dust settles, you know, and it takes a while, they can be incredibly proud of what they've done this season, Huddersfield. Massive positives throughout that whole football club and a real good opportunity to move things forward. Well, it's a venue, isn't it, and a day that really does generate the starkest contrast in emotions of what football that brings to us. It's sheer euphoria in Nottingham Forest dressing room. They're back in the Premier League after 23 years. Huddersfield Town, though, did run them very, very close, but for a couple of key decisions, it could have ended all very differently indeed. The thoughts of Terry's boss, Carlos Corbran, and more reaction after the break. certainly is an unforgiving place. Wembley, we are the wrong side of the scoreline. It's Huddersfield Town that lost 1-0 to Nottingham Forest here today. No repeat of the 2017 playoff fairy tale, but they did have a stellar season. They finished third in the division. Let's get the thoughts now of the man behind it, Carlos Corbran, talking to Debbie Craig. Carlos, these are always very, very difficult moments in football. What are your emotions at this moment in time? Of course, it's difficult because we wanted to, to come here and to be celebrating now the, the promotion of the team. And, and my feeling was that if I analyze just the game, 
I cannot criticize as many things to the team because for me the team was performing really well, making different things in every of the halves. But unfortunately, they had one opportunity and they scored. And I cannot tell you that we had many opportunities, but it's true that we have some moments that could have finished in a clear chance, but we didn't do. There were two big moments in the game when your players certainly thought they should have been awarded penalties. What was your view from the bench and have you had a chance to review it since the end of the game? I didn't do because the decision of the referee was done. But it's true that if I analyze the action of to follow, he could make a finishing and he doesn't make a he didn't make a finishes. The finishing was because of reason, no? But I know that the, it's not easy for the referees and even with the VAR. If they didn't consider that was a penalty, I cannot do, thing, I cannot do another thing more than to accept the situation. How frustrating was it to concede the goal in the manner that you did, an own goal just before half-time? Did that change things tactically for you at half-time? Yes, the, the things were clearly we had to change the things because we had to be more aggressive than we were in the first half. We needed to attack more than the first half and this is what we did. <laughs> Sorry. Your second half performance, can you believe that you had that much domination of the ball and that much control of the ball yet failed to take an opportunity? I think that didn't adapt really well to the different moments of the game. In the first half we didn't want to make them run and create spaces because the more aggressive maybe we were, the more was to the challenge and more physical differences they were doing. So we were just compact, trying to use the counter-attacks. It's true that from our counter-attacks we didn't create enough. And I had the feeling that in the second half we needed to attack more to, to go for the game. And that's, that's why we tried to do in the second half. And for me, we played the game in offensive half and this is everything that we can do. You've come such a long way as a group since last season, all the way to this playoff final. You've just missed out by a single goal. What do you do from here on now as a team and a squad looking forward? I think this is a sport, this is the elite sport. And when you play one final, one team is going to keep going in the in the championship, another team is going to go up to the Premier League. So the thing that we need to do is to accept what is our situation. And first of all, of course, now recover from all the season. And after keep working as a club in the championship. Is there more to come from this group? Do you need to add more to achieve your goal of gaining promotion? No, I, today I feel really, really, really proud of the play that I am working. I think they have shown that with high level of character, with togetherness, with confidence, with belief in the team, they have done something unbelievable because maybe something that nobody was expecting at the beginning of the season. And just this group of players with their mentality, they have put the team in the final and they have been competing in the final as one team need to compete. Carlos, we wish you all the best and thank you. You've given us some great moments throughout the season. Thank you. You're welcome. Echo exactly what David Craig has said there. It'll be a defeat keenly felt by Carlos Corbran, given how much he puts into the preparation of his side. But sometimes football doesn't lend itself to perspective, Joe. But this team finished 20th in the Championship last year. Finished third, 90 minutes away from the Premier League. Just how good a job has Carlos done this year to turn it around? Oh, I think behind Steve Cooper, listen, he's the one who's got through today and, and got that team promoted. You know, they're both certainly up there as, as managers of the season. Mm. For me, of course, Nathan Jones got it a few weeks ago. I think if we'd waited a few more weeks, certainly these two would be in the running. Unbelievable turnaround from where they were last year. Again, tactically, I can't speak highly enough of mm. how he sees the game, how he changes things. Listen, it was just one game too many in the end for them. But again, I'm sure they'll come back stronger next season. Michael, you know exactly what it's like in the belly of the Terrier Beast. Will this then just sow the seed to go again stronger next season? There's no other uh, possibility. Mm. You arrived here. Obviously, you were unlucky. You did win. The match plan was clear. It is what it is. No problem. But you will suffer now mm. and it will hurt a lot. But you have to stand up. Stand up again and work as hard as possible that you maybe are next year here again and can do it. This is the big goal, mm. obviously, but pff, you suffer so much. Joby, the next couple of weeks, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine this, how you, how you feel, mm. but you have to go again. There's not, 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 not a lot of possibility. Go again. So it's hurt today for Huddersfield. Forrest, though, absolutely flying. Here's Steve Cook now with Jonathan Oakes. Well done, Steve. You've had some special moments in your career. Where does this rank? Right at the top. Um, we've done it the hard way. We, we, we suffered this year. We, we had disappointment, but the group the group's incredible, you know. And the, that's no good. 
It's not good for my hair. It's not good for my hair. I'm thinning out already. Um, no, nah, they're, they're a great group and to be involved, to, to only be here four or five months and experience this and at a club this size is beyond imaginable. So, yeah, r ridiculous, unbelievable. Bournemouth went up, you've gone up. I mean, this is the perfect outcome for you, isn't it? Yes, yeah, uh, it started off as a, a really bad season for myself. Um, I eventually paid my tip way into the Bournemouth team and, and we've both been promoted, so it's an absolute dream season. Oh my Lyle Taylor's just absolutely deafened me. Um, no, it's been a, it's a dream season to see Bournemouth go back up and to be promoted with uh, Nottingham Forest is, is a dream. And I've actually become blind and, and deaf. Um, uh, incredible, incredible. It stings when it goes in your eyes, isn't well, it? Does it? <laughs> What's the plan tonight then? I, I expect it'll be quite a lively one, judging yeah, by yeah. this. I think we're going to go full Jack Grealish. Um, we, 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 we saw obviously the celebrations and we, we dreamt it'll be us. And uh, it's the only time that I'll probably have the ability to be Jack Grealish, and uh, I'm going to enjoy it. We've seen what Premier League football is like at, at Bournemouth and what is it going to be like in the city ground next season? Uh, do you know what? I, I, I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be incredible. Um, every one of these players now needs to step up. The fans need to go again because the, the Premier League is, is relentless. Um, but Forest, Forest, they're a club that should have been in the Premier League years ago and now we need to do them proud in the, in the highest league in England. Well done, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Cheers, guys. Some serious shakes being thrown inside the Nottingham Forest dressing room there. And conning a new phrase, Steve Cook. Thank you very much for doing a Jack Grealish. That was Steve Cook. Let's see what Steve Cooper said to his team after the game. A couple of things I want to say to you, all right? I just go back to that meeting that we had. We spoke about family, OK? Make sure you spend time with your family today, the people that have been good to you in your life, because they won't be anybody prouder than them, OK? All right? And the second thing is... What is the Premier League? Yeah! It really is an amazing thing to see, and it is a privilege when we cover it here on Sky Sports to have access to change of rooms and have managers over and players over. So that's right now, that's the joy, that's the euphoria, that's the celebration that goes on tonight. The big question, Stuart Pearce, is when all this dies down, <laughs> how do they do in the Premier League? Well, from the players' point of view, it probably won't die down for a few <laughs> weeks. I can assure you, you go into management, it dies down, you're thinking about Straight it away. tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh dear, mm. you know, what am I going to do? What players are we bringing in? I think a real key point for Forrest as well, I think it's the 16th of June when the mm. fixtures come out. That really sharpens your focus about where this football club's going next year what the recruitment's got to look like and more importantly some of the players that we had Yatesy here mm -hmm. and, and Brennan and, and one or two mm. others that have come through the academy and done them really proud you know their next evolution as footballers so fantastic achievement by Forrest and uh, well they've got to look forward now. That's a huge challenge on the horizon Joby. It is but it really helps we spoke about potentially if they didn't go up the, the perils that they might find themselves in in losing some of those key players. It strengthens their position of trying to keep hold of a, a Brennan Johnson who's going to have interest. Jed Spence, who's obviously been on loan, James Garner, mm. you know, Keenan Davis. And if they can get some of those back in the building and then build and maybe add a little bit of that Premier League experience. Listen, it's a football club that should be in the Premier League. And I think that will be a huge, huge factor for them moving forward. And Michael, consolidation, survival is the first part of call, isn't it? They should, they should looking for mm. stay up in the Premier League. Mm. Obviously, get the recruitment right, hold the core players, and then add some pure quality with mm. Premier League experience, and then just stay in the league, stay in the league, and build from there. But um, I'm sure, first of all, they have to do the celebration right, and then uh, they go from there. Gents, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend this playoff final with you here at Wembley. Three legends of the game and a wonderful company all the way through the season. See you all very soon. So, more football coming your way. Just a small matter of World Cup qualification. On Wednesday at 7pm on Sky Sports Football, Scotland take on Ukraine. And then next Sunday, it's Wales and Gareth Bale that await the winners of that particular game. That's at 4pm. That's also on Sky Sports Football. So the wonderful thing with this beautiful game is full of debate, opinion, conjecture. We've heard a lot of it over the course of the game today with my three wonderful studio guests. But right here today at Wembley, there is an irrefutable truth 
after 23 years. Nottingham Forest are back in the Premier League. Well done to everyone involved at the City Ground. From us all here, summer well, and no doubt we shall see you all very, very soon. Good night. Come on, far from more than it repeat. If you want to know something about me, the blood in my veins is full of northern green. I got that northern soul, man, I go back to me. We're far from ordinary people. people. If you want to know something about us, the hearts in our chairs are full of northern love. Even when we broke, we'll always have enough. We're far from ordinary people. Falling again We look up to greet the heavens Who cares if we are hearts beginnings We look onwards If you want to know something about me The blood in my veins is full of northern green I got that northern soul, man, I go back to me We're far from ordinary people We're far from ordinary Sky Sports Football. Feel it all.